Okay, so this is a special type of syntax, which is HTML syntax. I'll be writing that type of code. So instead of creating a file as .txt, I'll be I'll be creating it as .html. How the uh, how where is this gonna helpful? If I open this file in browser to see my web page, browser will be able to understand that I'm not reading a text file. I'm reading an HTML file. So it knows it needs to convert the syntax from HTML to some valid elements to show you something. Okay. Uh, so how, what is this? What does that syntax look like? Yes. So how does the syntax look like? So HTML is very simple, and because it's old language, there are not many features available here. Okay. Uh, so basically, you have to think about what you want to show onto the screen. If I want to show, so I'm pretty sure all of you have used either Telegram or WhatsApp, right? Everyone uses WhatsApp. How do you make bold text in WhatsApp? Okay. So the way that you send bold text in WhatsApp is by surrounding the text with stars like this. Okay. And if I do this, so let's say text, then this text becomes bold, right? So this is called a special type of formatting. Each and every language has this type of formatting, WhatsApp picked stars. Any other Telegram, if anyone uses, they use double stars like this. So text. Now text becomes bold. Similar way, HTML has its own type of formatting. If you want to make any text as bold, all you'll be doing is you'll be writing the syntax that looks like this. E and slash b. What does b stands for? Bold. It's in the name, right? So bold, angle bracket, b, closing angle bracket. And here, between the opening of b tag, we call it a tag. This is known as a tag. Okay. So opening tag and closing tag, we, we write whatever we want to give the special meaning, right? So we want to give the special meaning to text word. We'll be writing it like this, b and end of b, right? So if I save this file, now, if I can open this file in my browser, either by typing the URL here directly, like slash uh, C drive and all those things, if you are on Windows uh, or users, and if you're on Linux, Mac, slash whatever, or I can whatever in simple terms, what I can do is I can right click. There will be an option called as copy path to copy the path of this file. If I copy the path and I can directly paste it here. And if I click enter, Right. You see, the text is now bold. So this is the way that you give special meaning to anything in HTML. Now, because the file was ending with .html, browser will be able to convert this code to bold text automatically. Now you can guess, how can I make italic text tilted? If B is for bold, you can guess, take a guess now. It's that simple and it will be valid. Yes, correct. So if I want to make any text tilted, italic, italic, I'll be writing it between I type, okay, angle bracket, I, closing angle bracket, and write your text here, italic, and with a slash, end that tag. So the reason for that is only this text will be italic. It will not keep on going. Just like star star was there in the, uh, you know, WhatsApp, same concept. Okay, so if I save this, refresh, this text is now italic format. HTML is that simple. You just represent what you want on what you want to see on your web page, right? So bold is for B, uh, B is for bold, I is for italic. Of course, you will be for underline. Right, so if I write U and end of U, I, I get underlined text. Now you can guess for those who don't know, try to guess what would, how do I, what do you think if I want, of course, HTML is not just text format, right? There are lots of elements involved in the HTML page. There are images, there are buttons, there are forms, there are tables. But HTML can do in the same syntax like this. HTML can do all of those things. So take a guess. If I want to create a button, what do you think will be the name of tag? Whatever comes to your mind. BT button. Correct. 
try for those who don't know try guessing uh, so that you will your concepts will be clear for those who don't who know already the, i mean you know already so right so this is how you create a button so if i write just this code write something between it like say let's say click me save it refresh it i get a button and i can click on it is that simple okay and there is but there is uh bt for bluetooth there is no bluetooth tag i'm pretty sure so there is a way that you don't write uh, there is specific way you should write all this code uh just like you saw in that image where was that yeah so you saw in the image there is you know html has head body html gives you all these tags like head tag and body tag and you write your code inside body tag okay so if the, so you'll not be writing your code directly like that there is a reason for that uh because like browser needs to know something specifically where each and everything is so i'll create a template for you sample uh this is the reason why we are using vs code the things are given to you automatically what i did which button i press you don't need to know anything at the moment i'll give you all this code don't worry so you don't have to write anything from scratch just take notes that what thing is what and all i'll delete the things that you don't need and this and i'll just delete it like this equal to stands for uh where oh this one this is called as attributes i'll come to that so i'll come to that when we reach to css part so don't worry so i'll close this so if you see now this is also not needed, but I'll, uh, so if you see, there are many, many such other tags, B, underline, button, input, there are many such tags. The, the way that standard HTML works is, the way that you should write code is, you should always start with HTML tag. Inside that, there will always be two tags. One is head tag, one is body tag, just like this image, head tag and body tag in your HTML document in your html file okay and what's inside head tag the things that you don't see on the web page things that are happening in the background it could be anything right so imagine if you want to show an image onto your web page so you need to take that image from somewhere right you need to fetch that image from somewhere that fetching will happen in the background so things like that will you'll write it in the head tag something that user cannot see and whatever user sees will go here in the body tag okay so it's a body whatever you write here you will be shown to the user between the white from top left to bottom right corner okay so i'll show you the example that there is a special type of tag called as title in head if i change the title to make my trip just this you see my custom the web pages the title is represented like here like it's not in the web page so it's happening in the background and user is not you know necessarily involved with the this thing like the doc uh, in the title so the title goes in the head and the because of that tag browser understand which tab i'm visiting so make my trip i can make the same title as of the original make my trip so make my trip okay so this is what we want to do today uh the create to it uh, and of course the dynamic parts will not be there like the scroll bar and hover and anything just static things will be there so this is what we this is what we want to create so here you see there is a title called as make my trip dash hash one travel website so number one travel website if i use the same thing here make my trip dash number one fresh you see now both are same exact same of course logo is not there we can add the logo as well it's okay for now remember you're not gonna make my trip is like i don't know like million dollars product it's it's really really entire huge 
community team of people build this. Today you'll be doing it uh, just one guy in just one day. It took probably one year to make this product for the developers of make, make my tree. You're gonna just try to make this in one day and from scratch. So you will never ever be able to create the exact dicto product as of make my trip. It will take lots of effort. So some minor changes, like let's say colors are not same, icons are not same. Uh, some minor changes are totally acceptable. Of course, if they are using blue, and if you are creating, like let's say search button is blue here, and if you are creating, let's say red button here, that's not acceptable, right? They are using this like a uh, special type of color, like which is like light blue on the left and dark blue on the right. You don't know how to make this. So if you use only blue, that is acceptable. But if you suddenly use like yellow or green, that is not acceptable, right? You have to stick to as close as possible. Gradient, yes. So we are not going to cover that part. We are not going to cover difficult parts. I'll tell you uh, what that color is. You can basically just uh, you know copy paste that thing. Uh, if you understand well and good, but you don't have to know about it. Uh, what gradient thing is? It, because like I said, it, uh, learning everything in one day is not possible. Okay, so we have achieved the first part. Make my trick. We achieved the title is looking the same. Okay. Now before uh, writing the code, next code. Let's understand what CSS is. Not able to send message at all. I can see your message. So you send just message now. Um, anyway, so the next concept is this is HTML. Our next concept is I have, I have let's say, let's say um, a bold tag like this, uh, which says, I want to change the uh, for everyone, yeah, yeah, everyone is disabled. So, yes, cascading style sheet. I want to change the color of the welcome text, right? By default, it's black. What I want to do is I want to make it red. So there is no such, there is no way to make it red in HTML. What is head tag contains some things that you don't, see, things that user does not uh, care about, things that should be happening in the background. Okay, so the, the, the HTML cannot change the color, HTML cannot decide the uh, like spacing, how much it should be from right hand side, left hand side, top, bottom, uh, letters, how much space letters will be, how much big the font should be, nothing HTML can decide. They, uh, they, this is where the CSS comes into the picture. We want to change the way that element is looking, right? We want to change the way that welcome text is uh, we, we looking right now. We want to make it red. So what you're going to do is you're going to write a special type of syntax again. Now this is another syntax, which is called as cascading style sheets. And you write these style sheets in a specific tag called as style. It's in the name. You want to write styles, you'll be writing it in the style tag under head tag here. Between style and end of style, you can write a specific syntax that will automatically get applied to the text where you want. Okay. The syntax for that looks like this. So dot always starts with dot and anything that you want. We call them classes. Okay. So describe what you are doing, what you are trying to do. We are trying to make the red color. So I'm going to make it like this. So red color, right. And then opening and closing curly brackets. Can I use external file? Yes, any extra knowledge you can use, totally fine. Uh, remember at the time of submission, you can only submit one file. That is the reason I'm writing everything in one place. Uh, so you can anything extra that you want, but at the time of submission, you will just have to merge everything together and then submit, okay? Uh, submission of the project at five. So what we, what we are writing here, special syntax, always start with dot, one thing, then describe anything what you want to do, what you are trying to do with the color, right? So we are trying to make the color to red. So I wrote red color here. Anything else you're, 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 you'll be doing, let's say you'll be doing big font. So you'll be just writing big text here, something like that. Describe what you're trying to do. Okay? And then describe what you want to do actually. Please repeat from first line. No, we are way ahead of that. First line is we are way behind now. Okay, so the 
CSS is really, really simple. Okay. If you have already filled the attendance form, then don't fill it again. Attendance is only one time. Okay. So CSS is really simple. What you have to do is think same thing, just like you saw, like B is for bold tag, I is for italic tag. Think about what rule do you, do you want to change? You want to change the color of the text. So rule for that is color, as simple as that. And then colon, describe what that color you want to do. You just want red, so you'll be writing red and then semicolon to show that rule has been ended here. Right? So this is how you, you, you can represent any property. Think about it. If you want to make, okay, let's see if that works. It will not work right now. Okay, I cannot see red color here. I uh, want to write same text bold as in same color and red black. Then you'll be you can write multiple rules. Any number of rules is fine. Okay, we'll see that. Uh, I, I'll write multiple rules here as well. So why is it not working? I have said color is equal to red, but why why my welcome button is welcome text is not red, right? Why is it still black? Because the red color I'm not telling the B tag to get that red color. Because think about it, there will be multiple such rules. Right, one says blue, one says green, like that. Right, so you have multiple such classes, like let's say blue color, this one says green color. So, which one of these three classes should welcome pick? Right, so welcome doesn't know about which one of these three to pick. Now, he, here is where you give the attributes to, to the tag that you want to apply this class. So it looks like this. So always write like class is equal to the class name that you want to apply. What do we want to apply? A red color. So copy and paste it. If you type, you may make mistake. You are starting typing may make mistake and you'll be like, why is it not working? It looks correct to me and all. Usually copy paste at the start. Okay. So what I'm going to do is and don't copy the dot part you only need the name of that css selector uh, css rule okay it's red color only so i'm going to write class is equal to red color now the b tag knows whatever the text is it inside the b and end of b inside b and slash b it needs to have all the css rule that are represented by red color text what is red color it's here what does it say its color needs to be red. Okay, so if I save this, refresh, there you go. Now my color is red. Do we have to do it along with you? No, not at all. I'll give you enough time at 12 to do this, all the things. Okay, so don't worry, just watch, take notes, just watch. Don't, not, don't do anything. Uh, similarly, if I want to make this welcome as green, find the class, it's here. Uh, it, it's here green color so all i have to do is give the green color ca class to this welcome text okay now the welcome text is becoming green now you can have multiple such tags let's say uh I'll let me introduce a new tag here which is called as div div uh, it's in the name it does not do anything it does not apply any specific formatting it just division tag it just combines the things together it does not do anything Okay, so let's say you have multiple tags. You can use div to combine multiple things together. So div tag, uh, so I'll just write some text here. Uh, let's say HTML. Okay, now I want to make this HTML, it's by default, of course, it will be black. I want to make it as blue. Same thing, what I'll do is I'll write this class is equal to blue color here. What, this, what it will do is, this div is going to go here and it's going to look for where is that blue color class it's here no it's here and then it's going to apply all the rules to this html bootcamp text and there will be multiple rules okay i'll talk about that as well so it's going to go here and it's going to apply the blue color to this text does that work yes it works okay is the classes concept clear now how how does this work any doubts in this because that's all you want to need, nothing else. You don't need anything else. You write your code here, what you want to change. You write it in a class, like a dot something, and you apply it here, like class is equal to which of these three 
there could be multiple and we just apply it here. Yes, great. Repeat div once again. Div is not, it doesn't do anything. It just like uh, it, it combines the things together. Doesn't do anything. That does not give any special meaning. Right, see this. It's same as if I don't have class. And if I just write the same thing, HTML would come outside div. Right? Both are gonna look same. It does not do anything. It's just like I want to apply some uh, class to this HTML bootcamp text. So I just surround it with H the, a tag, which does not do any special meaning. So I'll just write now I can write class on it. Why color not color? Uh, the C the rules are created by some American institutes. So that's they use the American spellings. Okay, so yeah, and what are the brackets for? Where are the brackets? These, these that's the syntax. That's how it works. If you don't write any of these, it will not work. So if I don't write this, it will not work. The green color is gone. That's the syntax. Yes, dot is compulsory. Okay. Now I'm going to delete all these styles and we can start with the basics. That's all the basic you need to know. What's a class? How to write the rules? I can tell you one more example. So let's say we are applying green color here, right? To welcome green. I'll apply red just in case it looks, if you can see it. Okay. So welcome is red now. I'll tell you how to apply multiple rules. So a red color class. I'm applying color is equal to red. So you remember there are many, many CSS rules, many. Okay, uh, and they all represent what you want to do. Syntax, no, syntax. Syntax, syntax means the way of writing code. Syn uh, tag is a syntax, like this is a syntax. How many CSS properties are there? hundreds but luckily you don't have to remember all of them you just have to think about what you want to do so let's say you want to make the font size okay you want to increase the size of this welcome text to really really big giant what do you want to do you want to change font size so you'll be writing font dash size that's it it's that simple it's that simple and because this reason you don't have to remember or any of the css rules it's directly in the name Right. So font size, let's say 70 pixels, right? You know, pixels, a single dot on the screen. So if I make it 70, refresh the page, it's going to be become big 70 pixels. Right. So all the, all the CSS, uh, you know, rules are represented by what they are doing. If you want to give it a border, only you need to know the syntax, but you know, the, what is the way of writing that thing? So you're going to give a border to this welcome. Just write border like that. So border. But now this part is like how uh, you need to know about this. Like there is, it comes from experience only. Like borders thickness. How thick the border should be. How much pixels? One pixel, two pixel. What is the type of border? Like dot 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 or a straight line. And there are many types of border. So solid is like straight line border. And a color of the border. The color I want. Let's say orange so this is the border that i need to give to a red color class and wherever it is applied it's going to have the border so if i save this refresh refresh there you go right there is a border to welcome now why we use this to give the value you need to know like where the key is stopping and where the value is starting Okay, uh, what will happen if I write the code after that class or outside of that class? It's It will be syntax error. It will be ignored. Syn you, you shouldn't write anything that is not suggested from, the, it will just not work, right? So clear now, uh, one important CSS rule all of you need to know is uh, margin, right? What margin does is it adds spaces between two elements okay now th think uh, listen to me very very carefully you're going to need this rule a lot uh, generally it's not recommended rule but it's really good rule to know when you are starting 
uh, in professional way it's done it a bit different way so listen to me very carefully you're going to need this rule a lot and simplest rule possible you're going to you need to add the second class and there is you need to add some space between this html bootcamp text and welcome text right there needs to be some space html bootcamp should come somewhere here so what you're going to do is you're going to apply margin css rule to any of the classes so this is i'll give this green color name because i need to write the margins on this class okay so either apply margin top margin dash top sorry margin dash bottom on this margin dash bottom let's say 10 pixel what we'll do is it will add 10 pixel below margin right? just like notebook you know what's the margin is on notebook right remember like it used to be now i don't know i don't think anyone uses notebooks anymore but if you do there is a left hand side is margin left um, on every notebook right so that 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 thing is known as spacing and the welcome if you want the same space but not on only on the left if you want anywhere left top bottom right you write the css rule for that margin so what we want we want space below welcome so on this element I'll write margin bottom and whatever that value will be, that amount of margin space will be left below it. If you want to some spacing on the right hand side, you write margin right on this side, right? So if I write margin bottom and give it any value, 20 pixel. Okay, so if I say this refresh, And did it work? Uh, uh, uh. It's going may maybe, but yeah, your voice is low. No, I don't think so. Try increasing your uh, the speaker volume or something. Can you make different class for size and color? You can, if you want, you can. Generally, the reusable part is used uh, together. But you coding in head tag, in it is visible. No, this code is not visible. This code is read by the browser only. This code is not visible to the user. What happens up after applying the code here? That thing is getting you visible to the user. Different things. Okay. Clear now, margin. Uh, if this is not working, I'll see what why this is not working. Maybe I just overwrote some uh, other rule. But yeah, that's the idea. Or if I apply margin on this margin, remember margin bottom on welcome is same as margin top on this. So both are same thing. So margin, if I apply margin top here, will that work? And also remember for those who know already, like this works. So those who know already like uh, HTML, some, uh, uh, some HTML, you'll be like, why am I using this? Can I not use that? Absolutely. There are so many ways to do just one thing. So many, not even two, not even three. There are many ways to do one thing. Any other way is always acceptable. This is programming. This is logic. Okay. Any other way you feel like you want to, you know, uh, maybe because of border. No, I tried that. We'll see that. We'll see that. Uh, anyway, we, we, we don't need this code. Okay. So any other way you feel like you can add spaces, go for it. Totally fine. You don't always have to stick to what I'm writing. If you know some other things, totally go for it. If you know some other, uh, you know, live server extension, go for it. Totally fine. Okay. We need to note your code. No, not at all. I'll give you this code at 12. Don't worry. Okay. So let's get started with the actually creating the, uh, I'll delete all the codes. I'll keep the styles and delete all the HTML, nothing at all. So, okay. So you can't, you can't see anything. Um, let's think about what we want to implement in this page. Okay. Uh, things like that. So where, what you want to like, what you, when you want to implement a big project, you don't always start with like, uh, let's start with coding. It doesn't work like that. You have to divide, you have to divide the entire page into smaller, smaller problems. Okay. So this is my entire page. 
I cannot directly start with, let's say, let's create start button first. Doesn't work like that. You'll never know like where you need to apply. So from the top, break down your page into smaller parts. Okay. So this is one part. This card is another part. This card is a, a card is another part. Then is its button. Then this card has other, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five things inside. And this is the structure is going to help you how your HTML should be structured. How can I run HTML together in VS code? Right click on the file. Don't do anything. I'll tell you all the, all the instructions that you need at 12. Don't worry. Don't do anything right now. Okay. So you break down the problems in this card, uh, card, I need to create these many divs. Looks like, let's say one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, nine or 10 divs, right? Then you'll be able to take from top to bottom approach, create the parent first, then break it down it in the small, small children, then yeah, implement that. Okay. And this is how we are going to divide our entire problem and implement that. So how do we do that? Uh, so did you join late? If you join late, then I cannot help you. Uh, if you joined at 10, 15, we started from zero. Uh, if, if you join late, then I would suggest joining the, uh, you know, next bootcamp where we again start from scratch, uh, then you, you may be able to get the things. Okay. Uh, so this was message for someone else others yeah, so see this now what we are going to do is let's create the first thing first what we want is uh before even doing this see this there is a background that is coming on the body that looks like this this is also another gradient uh it's called as gradient uh you don't have to uh you don't have to worry about it remember like in the start like i said some things will be there that you will not understand some things you just have to follow so to implement this gradient, what you have to do is you have to write the CSS rule is of course same, but the syntax for that may sound a bit, uh, you know, what's going on and all. So like totally new to you. It's not as straightforward as that. For that, you need to know some part of programming. So for that, I want to give a class to my body itself now, because that gradient, that background is on my main page. It's not like on a smaller day. It's not like on the logo. Ah, uh, yes, yes, I'll do that. Yes. Okay. So that's why I said, do not write any code. Just watch. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to give the gradient to my body tag. So I'm going to create a class for it and I'm going to apply the class here on the body. Call it anything. Let's say background, something like that, because that's what we are going to implement. And I'm going to copy this, go into style tag dot background, right like this. Okay. And then some things I have studied them already yesterday before joining. So I know what the values are. Uh, so the background color and all you need to, uh, you know, get, you know, there are specific rules that you have to write. So they look like this. Uh, should I turn off my video? I'll, I'll just keep it. Let, it be. Uh, let me know if someone is facing bandwidth issues. Maybe I'll, they, then I'll turn off my video. Okay. So it looks like this. So you have to write uh, the first rule is background color. You have to give uh, this short form for that is just background. So both are exactly the same. The color is if you just write white, it will work. Okay. But VS code, how it helps you is you can hover on this square, white square, and you can change the color to whatever you want like this. Okay. This is, this is why this is the reason we asked you to install VS code. The color that we want is something like this, some, something not exactly white. That is roughly white. It's not exactly at the top. It's somewhere here, some somewhat darker. Okay. Uh, the... Okay. Okay. Cool. I'll stop the video for some students are facing bandwidth issues. Uh, cool. So the background is the first rule. The second rule is you need to write background, uh, repeat, because what we want is we don't, whatever the gradient we are going to give, it should not, it should be only once, right? So no repeat is the value for that. Remember, do not, you don't have to know each and everything of this for now, ignore, even if you ignore all these rules of background, it's fine. Basic rules. You need to know which are width, height, margin, color, 
font font size they understand them only these are fine i'm just explaining just in case someone doesn't know okay so uh, then comes the background image property because we want to create a gradient here okay which is an image but instead of downloading image we'll be creating it by code like this so linear gradient and the syntax for that is like this. so to bottom then uh, the color values i know already i have copied it yesterday i'll just copy it no repeat means it will only happen once it will not keep on happening again and again like it, it it's only going to happen here and stop it will not continue again after this okay so if i do this save this refresh the page my entire bag uh, the body has this background okay now what we want to do is we want to give it some constraint it should not uh to bottom is default really but of course the second value is the color now so if i remove that the color will be the first so the order will be checked, uh, changed that's fine so what we the next part we, what we want to do is we want to keep the width as it is but we want to restrict the height to somewhere here so it looks like 500 pixels somewhere around that i know it's 500 because i studied the website earlier I, I know some width, some colors, and all those things are already. So the to do to, to do that instead of doing the height till here, width is supposed to be hundred percent, but height is supposed to be five hundred. The rule for that is background size. Okay, this one is suggesting width, so hundred percent, and the height is somewhere around five hundred pixel. So if I save this, refresh the page. It, it it comes here but because that's because i'm i'm zoomed out so what I, if i reset the page now you see we are a lot closer and what we did is we basically wrote the four rules no 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 we are we are going at this pace because this is one day boot camp in masai this takes two weeks to learn we are at a workshop remember that we are not at a class so some some expect some pace right i'm not at all going fast i, I i'm going each and every going through each and everything and so these things will take some time to learn in if you join masai these things you learned over two weeks you have entire two weeks to learn all the simple simple things okay so don't worry we are we are at a workshop so you have to go through at a pace now what is rgb rgb stands for red green blue so red value is this green value is this and blue value is this and for those who did not understood the background properties ignore like just think of it it doesn't exist for for you it's okay remember like what i said there won't be things that you will not understand totally fine just understand minor minor parts margin color fonts height width only only understand that what do you mean by background repeat it's gonna it's not gonna repeat the things okay by writing that code we have achieved this part same it look it's looking almost same some things will be here and there and that is totally acceptable remember that you don't have to create a pixel perfect product you have to at least match somewhat closer okay we have to submit all today yes but you don't have to write anything of this i'll give you this code to get you started at 12 don't worry all this code you will have have it okay the next thing that you need is some uh you need to reset the background and all uh why is 100 percent in background size because i want 100 percent of my screen and that's a good question right i want 100 percent of my screen as width i don't want here i don't want here I like full width so 100 percent width Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is think about what is the content now. Now I don't care about any background or, or anything else. Okay, what is the content? How do you determine the height of the background size? It comes through experience as well as you know you have to inspect the page and check how much they are they are using, like this. So you have to click here and see, then find the values here. It comes through experience. Remember, it's not going to happen in one day okay so i what i want after this is i i want all my content to be centered here so for that 
I'm going to write entire code in just one day. Okay. And I'll call it maybe main section or something like that, because you see entire code is in one single div that division that is like centered and that has some fixed width. Okay. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a bat in my body. I'm going to create a class called as give it any name, main or anything, content, section, whatever you want to give. Okay. So, and I'm going to write the rules for that. Okay. So what, what we want for this main, we want the UTF eight. It's a character encoding. So what we want for this is we want like the content to be centered vertically. The rule for that, uh, I joined just now. No, you have to be here till uh, at 10.45, uh, sorry, 10.15. Otherwise, you'll not understand what I'm writing. What is main? It's just a word. Call it anything. Call it content. Call it main uh, content. Doesn't matter. It's just a word. Whatever you want to call it. You can give it your name as well. Uh, usually, meaningful name helps, of course. Okay, so what we want is we want this content to be centered. Okay, so for that, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write whatever I write here. Let's say I'll, I'll write a dummy text here, text and see where it appears. It's going to be here at the top. Recording, no, I don't, we don't provide the, it's a workshop, right? So you have, that's why you have to attend recording. You can, and there is no point in a workshop then, right? So recording will not be provided. So what we want is we want to center this text here. So the rule for that, remember this as well. You're not going to understand it for those who are starting from scratch. Remember, if I write like this, it will be a centered vertically at the center. Horizontal center is different. Vertically centered, uh, like it, it will be like this. So if I write like display to the parent, of course, not here. So what we want to do is on the background, we want to write display flex and justify and then center okay so if you just write like this whatever the children are there in the background these children will be centered vertically so now the text is here at the center and this is what we wanted right uh Is by default that every text appears in the top? Yes, from the start uh, at the uh, it's, it starts on the top. What is flex? You're not going to understand that. Even if I, it's called as flexible model, you need to know what display types are for that and all. It's okay. What you need to know is if you write these two things, the children of that class, right? Where am I writing this in the background? So backgrounds, children, this div and all these things will be centered. That's the only thing you need to know. If you write like this, it will be centered. That's it. So at any pace, you want to take the things to center. You just copy these two rules. Okay. The next thing that we we'll do is, uh, let me call this, should, should we call this container or, or main is also fine. I'll, I'll call this container because main is a tag for those who know already. Flex is what I just said, do not worry. It's a flexible display model. Don't, don't, don't worry about it. So what we want to do is next thing, we want to restrict the width because the entire thing, uh, the container should not take entire width, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a width of somewhat around to 1200 pixel. How, what, how did we reach to 1200 pixel value? I know because I studied it yesterday. I know what the width is. This is somewhere around 1200. Okay. Can you remove the Explorer to show the full screen of VS? Okay. <clears throat> okay. So width 1200 pixel. Right now I have 1200 pixel everything in the center, but it's not going to overwrite the refresh. The text is at here somewhere. Now what we want to do is, uh, what is why is this happening? So if, if you see the container is at this center, 
because of the backgrounds as display flex and justify center these two things the child child is at the center but whatever you are writing is starting from top of that container okay so what i can do is i can write the images here which is where i want this image logo so how do you give the image if any at any point you want image from this side you can right click there click on copy image address every image has an address copy that image address what it will do is it will give you the url to see that image so if i paste it here you can see the make my trip logo okay so if i copy that image and if i just paste it here what do we want to show the image the tag for showing that image is image tag img and src means source of what image you want to show if i just paste that url here refresh the page there you go i have the image logo now it looks a big right the original logo is smaller so what we want to change we want to change the height and width of the logo so what what i'm going to do apply height and width on this logo right so if i give it a class call it let's say logo or anything and then apply this height and width to it let's say dot logo the height and width are when do i write this code at 12 you don't write any of the code i'll give you to start i'll send it on the discord don't worry so height is somewhere around 110 pixel and width is somewhere around 60 pixels no width is i guess 40 30 40 pixels it's uh, you can just see this by if you don't know the uh, width and height of anything you can just hover on it so it's it says 113 and 36 so width is 113 okay i wrote the incorrect thing 113 and height is 36 right you wanted to change the height of this image you applied a class to it and you is just writing what you want to change if i do this go back to my page refresh the page there you go logo are now almost same remember what i said you don't have to have pixel perfect product just somewhat close is fine what if i add tag width and height in image tag that will also work anything extra you know totally fine no absolutely no problem at all okay uh, how to log the orientation of width and height of the image orientation what do you mean in logo some firing or other how do how, how are they are they? so this is another image i'm not going to add that fireworks the uh, the patake going on in the background uh it's an another image you have to get that image you have to overlay it below this image with z index and all those properties i'm not going to go into that deep anyway the fireworks are temporary for the new year okay it's going to go away soon so we are creating the make my strip as it is uh, like the normal side so this is fine for now right so we have somewhat logo uh the right hand side of this logo i'll leave it up to you in your u session if you want to do it's just text okay what you have to do is you just have to write the div tags after this you'll get it you'll get it once you uh, you know start the u session you'll get what you have to do here but the reason why am i not going uh, i'm not going to cover it is uh, it's a bit complicated to for starting right there are drop downs and there is a there, suddenly there is a button there is another drop down which does not have gradient and there are icons uh, at start it may look bit overwhelming uh, so it's okay i I'm, i'm not touching that because the important section is this section at the moment if you understand this section you you understand more than half the website okay so what we are going to do is we are going to create this section okay so this is where we can i think we can call the main class uh, how to check width and height you go into inspector right click inspect and there is a the arrow button like this select an element it says so if you click on it then you can hover on any element just hover you don't have to click anywhere and it tells you what is the width and height of anything like this this button uh, in the inspector okay so let's create the next thing uh, after in the container remember every code in, goes inside container now why the containers width is fixed and we want everything in the center so here what we are what we're going to do is i'm going to create a new division 
so that I can apply styles on it. The division will hold the top part. Okay, so the cards is mostly right. So what I'm going to do is here, I, I call it something class is equal to uh, main section or like just main or I, I think main is class. So let's call it uh, container is taken. What should we call it? We should call it data. I guess that's fine. Okay, because the main data starts from here. And let's write some classes for it. The first thing what we want is, uh, I'll let me think about it. If I just keep it, I'll just keep it as it is. I'll tell you why. I'll because then I can come back and then change the. Uh, what I know what we want. What we want is in this section as well. What we want is everything to be centered, even in this section. So we want to write that code, but I'll not write it like this right now because you need to understand why we need to center it later. Then we'll come back here and then we'll make it center. Okay. So I'll keep it as it is. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create the discard now. Okay. It discard looks hard. I assure you it's not hard at all. Only one property from this card is hard to understand. Everything else is really, really simple. You want to give a background of why. You write the background color property, which is why that's it. You want to give the border radius, right? It's not exactly, how can I zoom in here? Uh, oh, I'm on. I, I accidentally zoomed in here. Yeah, so if I zoom in here, you see there is a round, the radius is round. This is known as border. You want to make this round so it has a radius. You know how a circle has a radius. So same thing, you want to apply border radius here. Right? The rules are as simple as that. So if I make a div for that card and call it, let's say, class is equal to container. Uh, container is always taken. I'll call it categories. Right? This is categories, different types of categories of traveling. Okay. Uh, you want me to turn on the video? I know, but like some of you are facing some, you know, bandwidth issues. So I'll maybe turn it on at V session. Let's see. I'll keep it uh, turn off till V session. Okay. So in the categories, what we have is we have to give, uh, uh, let's say these icons and lots of icons are there. So how many icons are there? One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Total of ten icons. So we need ten another div or span tags. So span is also the same as div tag, but on in simple terms, the correct difference is of course different. So span is also another tag, but both are almost same. Uh, in simple terms, if you have shorter data, you use small uh, span tag. If you have like small data to collect together you use span. If you have large tags, like big data, then you use div. But that's like superficial. The correct difference is like they have different display properties and all. But in simple terms, if I want to you know, suggest some simple words, the correct difference is if you just want to group two, three elements together, you use span. If you want to, uh, you know, so this is one icon. And if you want to group like multiple elements together, big elements, like say 10 different icons are there. So I'm going to create 10 different. So these are three to five, three and 10 different span tags. So multiple elements you want to collect together, you use div. Okay. So this is, this is going to represent one icon. Okay. So how do I create that icon? I'm going to create it. Uh, there is a something called as font awesome. I'm going to use that font awesome. Okay, they gave you the icons out of the box. I'll send you this link as well. Uh, I'll send you at the uh, U session as well. What you can do is you can search for your icons here. Let's say what we want to add first, we want to add the flight. So I'm going to search for plane or flight or something. So if I search this, there is a plane dash departure icon. If I open it in new tab, it gives me the code that I want to use. Right? This is I tag. Remember, we learned I tag. I is for italic. But even though it's an italic tag, I can still use it to show an icon by this because I'm using this library. OK, 
Okay, to use that library, you need to have some specific code. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste that code because it's it's a link tag. I'll tell you that. Uh, what it does is it imports that library. Okay, this font awesome library. Recording will not be provided. No, that's why webinar is there now. Otherwise, why we take the webinar? We could just release a recording on YouTube, right? So you need to attend the webinar and you need to attend it fully. So that's that's what the webinars are for. If I include this tag, a special type of tag, that it's gonna import this font awesome library in my code. Again, you don't have to learn this as well. Remember, we are doing web uh, bootcamp. You don't learn everything in just one go. Uh, now, after including that, I can use the special syntax, whatever icon you want. If you click on it, it gets copied as well. And if I just paste it here, okay, I will be able to use the icon. It will, you, you'll see this. So that icon will automatically come into my web page. So go here, refresh. Uh, yeah, it's here. You cannot see it because it's really, really small. It's here, right? It's 20 by 18. So you want to increase the font size of that icon. Uh, so you have to, some part of session is missed due to my technical issues with internet. That's fine. Uh, uh, you, I, you just need, you, if you're just, uh, you know, you understood the basic CSS rules, how you do it, then you'll, uh, that's the only thing you need to know for your use session when you actually gonna implement the things. And background color, width, uh, height, margin. Okay. And it also has the text called as flights. So if I write like this, go back. Can you see it? Flights. The icon is there here somewhere. You cannot see it because of the background color. And the flights, uh, the things here. So to see that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the font size uh, of that icon. Icon is just a, another font. Remember that. That's why it's called as font awesome. The, the library's name is font. Icons are also another font. So just the way that you can increase the text size of this flight, the font size, you can also increase the size of an icon by the same rule called as font size. Okay, to do that, what you need is you need to uh, give the font size to the icon. So let's go there. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write the categories here as well, but I'm not, not gonna write anything there as well. Keep it empty. And then I'm gonna write the categories, but what I'm gonna do, in the categories, I want to style. So here is the new thing for you. Instead of writing class on every single one of them, I can directly select the child of all the children of category section like this. So dot categories span. If I write this syntax, what this CSS selector gonna do is it's gonna apply this CSS rule in the categories to all the span tags. So where is the categories? It's here and all the span tags. Okay, so anything, anything I can, I'll, I'll write here, will get applied to all these span elements. So what we want here, we want to apply, let's say font size, which is 14 pixels. Do this, uh, by default, I guess it's 40. Then next thing that we want to apply is, I, I yeah, let's make the, let's make this font visible first because you cannot see it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create that box first, then maybe you'll be able to get the, uh, then you'll be able to see the things. Okay, so to make that card, simple thing, think what you want to, you know, what do you want to see in the in this card? What things are applied, what do you think? There is some width, there is some height, there is background color, there is some border radius, and all these things, you just have to implement it here. Background color, yes, right? So, so background color, let's try with background color. So if I write like this, background, Color. And if I just give white, that is also fine. Can we see it? Refresh. Now you can see the icon and the text as well. Okay. What we want next, we want to give a specific width. Remember this original, this card is not exactly full width, 960 pixel or something, or 1200 pixel. It's, uh, it's somewhere less than 1200 pixels. Some 
uh, 100, 150 pixel here, 100 and 150 pixel here, somewhere like that. So it's less than one, uh, the entire, so it has a fixed width. What I mean is it, it has a width. It does not span over full. So we're gonna need to give it a width tag, uh, the CSS rule, not, not tag. And it's something 950 pixels. So I know this because I, I studied it yesterday, right? So width is 950 pixels. So if you do this, now it's shrinking. Now, remember I said that it, the, we need to take this thing in the center earlier. So we left some thing here. The categories, it's inside data. So we want to make the categories at the center. And remember what the rule is for? What is the rule to make everything in the center? You see it somewhere here? Correct. Yes. Exactly. Both the things display flex, justify center. If you copy it, paste it in the data, refresh. Now it's in the center. You see, one step at a time, we are going closer to our goal. What is the next thing that we want? We want to push it down. Yes, correct. Okay, so what we want is we want to push the things below. So the rule for that is uh, margin, correct. So margin, if I write on this, uh, will that work? Let's see, margin top and give any some value, try it out, see if it works. Okay, now it's pushed below from the top, which is what we wanted somewhere around that. Okay, and then there is a border radius. It's the borders are sharp here. We want some radius on it. So we want, we're gonna write border radius, which will be 10 pixels or something. Then there is a new rule that you don't know. Does that work? Yes, the borders are not sharp now. Yes, this, I'll share the code with you at V session, don't worry. Okay, uh, one rule you don't know uh, so what is, uh, it's called as box shadow. If you see closely, there is a shadow here coming out of uh, all the sides, right? So we want that. So there is a, the rule for that is box shadow. And some, it, the, it looks weird. So you don't need to worry about it, what it is doing. Wherever you want to apply shadow, copy this and use it as it is. What it will do is it will add some shadow on it. You cannot see it because the background is dark as well. When we will add the second card, then you'll be able to see it. Okay, so we have added that. Uh, what is the next thing that we want to do? We want to give the, uh, we, we know, we want to make it bigger. So basically we want to leave some space internal. So just like margin is used to give the spaces between two elements, the another rule padding is used to give some space inside some element. Okay, so what we want to do, we want to leave some, apply some padding on the span tag, this and the icon. Okay, so what we are gonna do is in the div category span, we're gonna apply padding here. The padding, try it different values, unless it works, uh, this is not working. Do I, because I need to apply padding, how much should be, I don't think that it will work, no. Can you repeat the, who get the curve means, not sure what you mean by that. Border radius. Border radius is here. Categories. Uh, with the border radius, this this decides the how to give the curve to it. Okay. Uh, so height of categories. Yeah, height of categories. Height needs to be there. I'm trying to get it by padding only. Let me try something. So padding top, let's say 20 pixels. Hmm. Anyway, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have these things everywhere. So, but uh, let me think about it. You you will fix that. I'll just write the same icon everywhere. Uh, I'll leave this up to you to change this icon. I'll tell you how to change and all. But if I do this, I will see 10 different flags like this, right? So we wanted 10 icons but you'll be changing the icons and text yourself. The, this thing, 
Now we have added 10 different icons. What we want is we want to take everything at the center. So for that, you know the rule, you need to have display flex on its parent, so categories. So if in the categories, if I write that rule, display flex, justify content center, what this is gonna do is it's gonna take everything in the center. Okay, now the padding is working. Uh, okay, the next thing that you need is you need to apply the uh, Y use of span tag. Span tag is for, uh, you know, gathering these small tags together. It's, I mean, of course, it, like I said, it's not the correct uh, di 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 distinguishing. The correct difference is a bit different. Uh, it's the display values are different for both of them. Uh, how did you import the library? I, I imported a link tag, so it got imported with it. What does flex does? It's, it makes the display flexible, but it's okay. Uh, for now, don't worry about it, I would suggest. Okay, the category span then needs to have, explain import, there is no import. Okay, let it be, let it be. We are close to the break now. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some spacing. Uh, difference between padding and padding top. Padding applies all the four sides, padding top applies only on the top, not nowhere else. Okay, so let's do some changes. Uh, one thing is for sure, display center is not the correct rule here. What it's doing is it's centering everything in the, you know, at the center of the div. What we want is we want them, uh, that's not correct, right? It's not centered, this thing. This thing is, taking equal space for everything, right? On the both sides, it's taking equal space. So taking everything in the center is not correct. Here, what we want is we want space evenly. The rule for that is justify content space evenly. If I do this, save, now they are spaced evenly, right? They are not exactly spaced, uh, you know, at the center. Now everyone is space, uh, taking equal amount of space. The next thing what we want is we, the flight text is outside of the icon. We want it below icon. You can do the same by, uh, yes, yes, I'll do that. Remove padding top, that won't work. If I remove this, it's what it's gonna do is it's gonna just remove the spacing above the icons. What we want is we want to take these things below it. No, that is that won't also work. BR tag, no. What what will happen if we use BR tag is it, it will take the thing. You're right. Uh, BR stands for break, but it will not be at the center. So we also want to take make this text centered align as of the yes display flex. Correct. Good. Block tag, no. Correct, we want to make display flex, but on the span here. So here, all is children, the span tag children need to be display flex. And then align items is another rule. What it's gonna do is just like justify content aligns the things on the vertical position, the align items is gonna align them at the center position, right? So, but that will, uh, we, we can do this. So if I do this with align item center, it will also not work. What we want to do is they are centered now. We want to take them one on top of each other. So the rule for that is justify, no, wait, flex direction. Follow. So if I write like this, you see now fonts, everything is at centered align, but the text is now below the icons. The only thing is remaining now is to make the icons bigger. Uh, then we can take a break. So to make the icons bigger, it's a font. Remember, you can make font size. Let's say 16 pixel. Will that work? Oh, it's going to take everything as big. No, even the I. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make the this class FAS. This is coming from font awesome. So I'm going to just override the font size on this 
to let's say font size 20 or pixel which will what this will do is it will apply only font size to this class i and it will make everything bigger only the icons right it's working now okay so everything is almost looking close not exactly uh, how we want it but let's fix this after the break uh, so what I'm, what we are going to do is let's take a break and till 12 uh, remember to stay on the discord channel i'll send the entire code whatever we have done so far on the discord channel you have to download it from there and at 12 be ready with your vs code open then we'll start the next session after that okay so so far we have created some basic uh, html layouts for navbar and header and all <clears throat> and those who were here from from the start you know what uh, basic html and css you like you need to implement right only the css and how to write the syntax and all here onwards what we will do is we'll be coding together i'll be writing some small amount of code i'll give you some time you implement that part and then we'll move on uh, okay so let's let's see the, like what to do with that source code so you have downloaded some file right what you have to do is you have to let's say i don't have anything here okay what you have to do is you have to uh let's i'll close everything let's start from scratch find in your windows explorer or wherever you have whichever os you are on find that file yeah, my file was in the documents in make my tree folder okay so go there and then right click on the folder you'll see 100 percent if you have vs code installed you'll see the option something called as open with vs code your folder or your file as well if you are if you have the file you can open it that way as well but it's good idea to you know keep the file in some folder and then open that folder with vs code everyone can see this option if anyone cannot let me know just open it with vs code like this and click on it it's going to open that folder whatever file you have downloaded in vs code right everyone should see this now exact same thing whatever we had implemented so far right Wait. let me know if someone is facing an issue okay otherwise we'll see the what to do next now everyone is on the same page remember i, I said i'll tell, give you the exact same source code so far i haven't written any single line on top of it after that after we stop the pre uh, the at 11 40. so everyone all of you are on the same page now everyone downloaded the uh file and everyone opening the uh, opening open the file in the vs code so everyone is seeing index.html on the left and the source code on the right okay if if you are facing any issues or if by opening it this way what you can do is you can open the vs code first there is an option called as open folder or open just open you can use that as well if you click on this it's gonna ask you which folder you want to open I want make my tree folder, go to that folder, click on open, and it's going to do the exact same thing. Okay. Uh, whatever you did not understood, it's okay. Skip it. It's okay. Totally fine. Basic things only you need to understand, right? Basic things. Remember, flex and all those things you will not understand in one day. Even in Maasai, it takes two weeks to understand all these things, or even three weeks. Okay. Things like these, you will not understand. But you just for today you just understand like uh, what it will what it will uh, help you like what it will do with HTML. This will do. It will take everything at center. This will like not center. It's gonna do like even spaced out elements. This thing is gonna leave some space from the top. This thing is gonna give some width. This thing is gonna give the background color. Only these things you need to understand. Nothing else. Like basic basic things. Okay. So. Why am I haven't used end of head tag? There is no end of head. Maybe I maybe it will got deleted. Yeah, it's it's not there, but maybe it got deleted. So uh, before body it should be end of head. Yeah, but that's fine. It's okay. 
uh, HTML is forgiving it. Even if you have minor errors like that, uh, HTML is gonna forgive you, it's fine. Maybe I deleted it while uh, deleting the previous code. Okay, so after this, what you need to do is on the left-hand side, you should be seeing index.html. Right click on it, there is an option copy path. Everyone should see this same option. Right, everyone can see, right click, copy path. And click on it. Still not same page, you will 100% get, you will get the same page. Otherwise you did not download the file correctly. Okay, so if you click on copy path, it will give you the path where this file is. That's all you need. What you want to do with it is you want to go to your browser. I close these things that we don't need. Uh, this we don't need. We need this. So I'm gonna paste it in my new tab. If I paste this, you should see exact same output. Everyone can see this now. You don't have link to Discord channel. Then how did you know about the bootcamp? We only release bootcamps and discord channel you need to be in the discord icons are not displaying it should work just fine maybe just wait maybe they are just loading or something they will work but yes cool others can see the same thing <clears throat> okay now here onwards i open the index dot uh, index file yeah you can double click on it if you double click, then it's gonna open the preview. To get the source code, you need this. That's why we went the harder way, like from long. Okay, so don't double click on it, open it with VS Code only. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is, I, I'm leaving this thing for you, okay? This is like your task to change the icons. I'll tell you how to change the icons. So I'll send you this link to everyone. Okay, so if you click on this link, you should see the uh, you know same box, uh, same page that I'm seeing. Where at the here somewhere there will be a search box where you can type and search for something, any icon that you want. Uh, whenever you type, the icon below will be replaced, right, uh, with the things that you are searching for. Then uh, what you want to do is you want to uh, search for the icons that you want. What we want to, we, which icon that, that we want after next, it looks like hotel icon, right? So try to look for a close icon. You'll 100% not get the same icon. Look for something that is at least close to hotel. So if I search here, hotel, I'm getting this. Okay. You can open it in new tab or any tab is fine. So yeah, yeah, you, you're supposed to write this, do this with me now. Okay, we are in the V session now. Yeah, others can switch off their video. I'll also switch off my video, at, uh, or maybe I'll keep it open. Others can switch off their videos. Okay, that's fine. You all uh, others don't need to at all have uh, videos open. Okay, so FAS the code for that is FAS FAS hotel. It's the same if you see FAS. But except if it was FA plane departure. Holiday package, it will not be holiday package. It, it just search for something. Holiday package. Oh, you mean this? It may not be there. Search for something close. Think about it. What do you think holiday icon sh uh, should represent? Okay, maybe, maybe snow, right? Try searching for snow. Something close, clouds. Try searching for clouds. Balloon will not be there. I think balloon will not be there. But try it. If balloon you can find, put balloon. Uh, gifts, gifts you can find everything, whatever represents holiday. If some icon is not there, use that icon. Okay, so FA hotel. If I just replace this FA plane departure with FA hotel and write like this hotel, save it, refresh the page. My second icon is now hotels, beach, umbrella. Yeah, anything such is fine something close some it, it should make sense right if you use like for holiday if you use laptop icon that doesn't make sense 
there is no index.html in explorer you can double click to open it that is also fine double click on the index from explorer it, it will still open it here if you can't find the file on the explorer on the left hand side double click on it it will open then type it in the vs code come back refresh the page here okay refresh with control f5 right click refresh reload whatever is fine okay there is a refresh button here as well f5 will also refresh the page okay uh, now i can see the second icon now what we are going to do is i'll leave uh, changing of all the other icons to you you do that but let's fix the styling first okay we are just going to fix the styling part of it uh, okay so don't do it right now i'll you will have the time to change all the icons and text at three so don't do it right now it's okay if you have done some icons if you are uh, at that stage that's fine let's first fix the styling of this what we want to fix first is there is a space lots of spa uh, space between the text and the icon itself right so what we want to do is add some margin on the icon itself so what what we are going to do is find the icon add the margin on it where is the icon here uh think about it so if i add if i add a margin this is the icon class fas i'll try it first you don't do it let me see if this works so if i add margin bottom let's say five pixel will that add spacing below yes it adds so see this find this i class fas in your source code dot fas it should be at line number 58 because we all have same source code now okay line number 58 you find the fas i uh, class dot fas you want a space from that icon below so what you we are going to write is margin bottom what that rule does is add some space below the wherever you are writing how web page in our code from website can you repeat How we get a code from website? You mean this code? The this code you get from Discord. Download it from Discord. Okay, everyone changed it. Can you see this now? Same thing. Now we are a bit more closer to it. Maybe you can add some margin uh, for this as well. You make it below some something like that. Can we use padding? Padding is for internally. If you want to use padding, what you have to do is you'll have to add padding on the icon. Try it, try it. There is no one thing. You can use padding, of course, but you'll have to on, add the padding on another element. Margin gives the space from current element to other. How we get icon in our code from website? Oh, you, you want to get the icons. I'll send you some links. And find your icons. Click on that link, search box, find the icon, whatever you want. If you click on that, it gives the icons code, whatever you want to write here, HTML, I tag. If you click on it, it gets copied. And wherever you want to see that icon, I want it here, right? Before hotels, I paste it here. This should give me a hotel. Code, you don't write F5 in code. You write it in a browser. How do you add the icon library? It's in the link tag at the top. That's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, other th things don't worry. Mains, everything will be at the top, like link tag. Here it is. Okay. The next thing that we are going to fix is we are going to change the font of entire page. Why is that? Because you see our fonts are not looking at all this as their fonts are looking. Right? Their fonts don't have the corners at the top and bottom. So the, this type of font, font is known as sans font. Okay, so that's what we are going to fix. For that, uh, there is a link. The Google gives you the fonts directly, like fonts.google.com. You don't have to visit. I'll send you what you want as it is. So the font name is Lato, L-A-T-O. And this is the font that Make My Trip uses. Okay, uh, if you click on it, it's going to tell you on the right hand side what code you need. So this is the code you need. Let me send it to you for everyone. Uh, copy it from Zoom chat. I've sent three different messages because it should be visible. You just need to copy it once. Copy only one, any of these. And copy it and paste 
anywhere in the head is fine anywhere generally all link tags are kept together so find any link tag paste it there like this there should be like this link tag three link tags it should add okay and if you do this uh it will not work what you have to do is you have to give the font to entire body font family is the rule to change the font of any uh, right? this will not work i'll show you right font is still that same font that does not match the original uh, the original body right so if i do this instead of dot in the style tag instead of dot i write the element name this way i don't have to connect them together right this will apply these css rule to all the body tags there is only one body tag so what i'm going to do is i'm going to write if css rule name font family here and give it the font family that we want because of that link tag we can now in insert this font family lato with double quotes okay so if i save this refresh now our fonts are looking different and they are now bit matching with the original uh, site right okay uh, try this font family on body tag see if you can see the how to save save control s press control s or if you are on mac command s Can you repeat again? Uh, did you copy and paste it in the head tag anywhere? Right? There should be another link tag uh, already. Find any link tag, paste it anywhere is fine. Just don't paste it like be between another link tag. Uh, find in the head, paste it anywhere. Like give some space. Don't write it between link tag. Like after some link tag or script tag, somewhere around that, paste it anywhere in head tag. then you need to write on the body this css rule in the style tag now css rules are go go inside style tag so you need to write style body to the entire body font family lato l capital then you should see the changed font here right earlier it was different now it's different should you start working on it yeah 15 minutes ago 20 This part is done by front end. Why would backend change the font? Front end developer changes the font. Okay. Everyone can see. Can you see the changed font now? File link on Discord. Discord link is already on the Discord. Check it, Jan channel. You can see. Great. Cool. The next thing that we want to change is we want to change our colors are really really black dark what we want to do is we want to mask these colors it's like grayish right lato link no i can uh, i can send it on discord but like just copy it from zoom now I sent again for everyone. Copy this in in head tag. Paste anywhere. Doesn't matter where you are pasting. Anywhere is fine. This is gonna include the font in our web page so that we can use this font. Okay. What that code does? Ignore it. Don't even read it. Now we'll change the color of the text. The color of the text of entire body. I want to change. So I'll be writing code in the body itself. I can do that. Okay. So body, uh, I have already done color. It needs to be grayish something. I'll call G R A Y gray. Uh, here, luckily, uh, the E also works. So gray, whichever is fine. Okay. So A or E. So I'll get this grayish color. Let's see how our fonts look now. Uh, it needs to be a bit darker, I guess. Yeah, it needs to be a bit darker. So I can hover on it 
and scroll this cursor until I get the value that I want. I want somewhere around this. So yeah, much better now. Right now the fonts are bit matching. Okay, everyone can see the changed color now. Cool. Now the next thing is we want to create the background card now. Let's create the background card, which is a bit more, uh, you know, harder than the icons. Icons was easy. Okay, so ready uh, for background card, this card. Cool. All right. So for that, remember, we want, how did we create a card for this? Can we change something? Yeah, we can change something here. Like you see, the, their card is a bit below, our card is a bit at the top. You know what to do. You need to just add some spacing above it. Remember, like I said, uh, you can add any extra things on your own. That is also, that is always acceptable. You need to, you can fix these things. These things, like you, this thing, you know, like card needs to be a bit at below. And the rule for that is margin top, margin bottom, somewhere. See where the card is here. There, there is something called as margin top. I have written. Try increasing this value to 20 if it is not looking same. Right? If I do this, it, now it's a bit even below at the top. Play around with it. Play around width and all. Whichever fits, one rule may not fit everyone because we are using very, very basic rules here. We are trying to create the entire page with very, very basic rules. Uh, wherever it's not possible, we are using advanced rules, but as less uh, times as possible. Okay, so it will not, you know, it will not be the same for everyone. Uh, so what we want to do after that is we want to create this card. The way we, we created this card with a div, and then we gave, gave it some width, some border radius, uh, background color, exact same thing we are going to do with the this card okay so is it responsive no it's not responsive original card original site is not responsive so you don't have to worry about it okay so let's create this div so i'm going to go here in my categories remember the this card comes after this card so what we need to do we need to write a div after the categories card category ends here we need to write div, the next div here. So class is equal to. Do not spam, guys. Uh, we, we took the break at a 1040 already. So I cannot give one more break. In 15 minutes, that too is not possible. So after categories card, you need to create the next card. Call it anything you want. I'm going to call it tickets or something like that and then uh, you know what you need to give the css rules to these tickets uh the div so that we create that card okay so everyone created the div okay cool uh, now apply the css rules to the tickets card you know what you need you need width you need background color you need border radius and any other things that you need. So get the tickets class, copy, go to the top, dot tickets. Okay, it will not work, I'll tell you why. You'll not see it uh, below the, the previous card, but we'll fix that, I'll tell you how to fix that, don't worry. What will we make? Uh, any questions related admissions, I won't be taking uh, any, uh, this is a workshop for learning HTML and web uh, technologies only. Uh, you can try reaching out to the admissions teams on official email address. They will be able to answer your doubts. Okay, so tickets, what we want? Same thing that I said, background color white. Then it needs to have some width. When is the next break at 2 p.m.? Can you share this file 
I have just shared. It's on the Discord. Check Discord. 1200. Good. So let's write 1200 pixel. Let's see how it looks. Nice. Uh, and then it has some height. So height I'll give. Uh, we should. We, we are supposed to give height to this as well. We did not give because it automatically picked the height from the icons by padding and all. So technically, yeah, I'll close the explorer. Technically, we don't need the height here. I'll try giving. Uh, let's see if that works. So width and height for so that you can see the card. I'll show you that it's not working. So if I do this background color width height refresh, you see the card is here. It, it's coming after the this card. So how to fix this? What we need to do is we need to tell browser do not arrange. No, recording is not a uh, recording is not going to be available. Display flex that won't work. What we want to do is see here. We want to arrange the second card below the first card. So its position needs to be like flexible. We need to be able to say like top pixel. It it needs to be some amount from right. It needs to be some amount and so on. So it needs to be flexible somewhere. So any type of display flex, display block is not helpful here. What we want to do is we want to give overflow. No, we want to give position. We want to change the position of the second day. It needs to be below the set first card. Okay, so for that, we need, we're gonna use the same CSS rule. It's known as position, but this will be absolute. What does that mean? We need, we tell browser, I will handle the position of this card. Wherever I give, you have to put the, uh, the tickets box there only. White color is not coming. You maybe there is a spelling mistake on left or right hand side. Check the spelling both the sides. It's not C O L O U R. It's C O L O R and so on. Okay. So if I do this, also this will not work. Now the card is taking the entire uh, white space. Yeah, the card is taking the entire thing. Uh, for that, what uh, now? But if I add the after this position, absolute. What, what does it mean? It means like I will handle the position of this tickets block, not the browser. So now I can absolute as in I can tell like from top it needs to be 30 pixel. So instead of browser are arranging it anywhere, I will be deciding like from top it will be 30 pixels. So like this, so you see it's a top 30 pixels. So if I write like this, save it, refresh. Now it's 30 pixel from the top of my browser. Turn off the video. Okay, I'll turn off the video. Uh, I'll keep it turned off for next half an hour. And maybe then after that, I'll turn off. Okay, so this is taking the pixel from top. What we want to do is we want to take the top 30 from the container, the tickets card. The 30 pixel should be from this container. So the parent, uh, will that work? Let me see if I go here, categories. Relative, yeah, we want to give position relative, but it will not be on the, well, it will be on the parent. So who is the parent of tickets? Tickets has absolute position. You will not understand this, but just write with me. Everyone with me so far, everyone can see the same thing. From which respect we are positioning tickets from, if you are writing position absolute, then it comes from the screen. From screen stop, it needs to be 30 pixels below. Okay, so write these lines on tickets class. How do you know the libraries of HTML? You, it comes from experience only. The more you work with it, the more you will understand it. Okay, is it working? Uh, RGB, you can just hover on this white box and then just it, it will pop up this color AP card. Just scroll whatever the color that you wanted. Right? It will pick that color. Give 100 pixel tickets, that will also be fine, but the better way to do that is. Uh, scroll up, 
until you find the data dot data class. Yes, Z index also we need, correct. But, but uh, let I will add that, don't worry. So data and in, uh, in this apply position is equal to relative. If you do this, the 30 pixel top, this card is gonna take from the parent, not from the screen. Okay. So if I write like this, save it, refresh. Now it's taking 30 pixel from the parent, which is main. Now you can change, play around with uh, 30. I guess this should be 50, right? Looking same, cool. The project submission will be at five. How did we fix the categories as parent? Uh, no, the categories is not the parent. The parent is dot data. This is the parent. On that, we added position is equal to relative. Okay, just one rule we added. From on dot data, just add position is equal to relative. Then uh, scroll down and uh, change the top value of tickets. See how much you wanted. Anywhere, somewhere close is also fine. Like I, you, you play around with it. Whatever you feel like correct, use that value. Somewhere here, that is also fine. 70, mine is working on 50, 56. I'll try 70, I think it will be too much for my screen. Okay, 70 is also fine, no worries. 70 is also fine. good. Your source code is not, I read your uh, message, but what you need to do is you need to open the source code in VS code. Then you'll see, be able to see the code. Okay, if you double click on it, it's gonna open it here. VS code will not automatically know that it needs to show you the source code. Okay, now second part that we want to solve is the, the first card is going actually below the second card. The, this card needs to be above, okay, above of the first, the second card. The first card needs to be above. So what we are gonna do is find the second card's CSS rule. Where is that? Yes, correct, Z index. So second card is here, dot, first card, it's here, dot categories. Okay, the way that this Z index work is, Z index is the CSS rule name, okay. Uh, where is that? The dot categories, this thing. Okay, not category span, only dot categories. It should be somewhere roughly around line number 50, somewhere, okay, dot category. Here, if I add some rule, Z index is equal to two. What that's gonna do is it's gonna in the Z axis, okay, it's gonna keep this categories element on the second index. And if I give Z index as one to some other element, it's gonna be below that, right? The like second becomes at the top, one Z index goes below the second one. Zero goes even below that. Three comes above this Z index, so on. So zero, one, two, three, four. This is how the Z index works. So if I give Z index two to the categories card, this card, and to the tickets card, if I give Z index as one, what this will do is it will put the categories card above the tickets card, right? Just one CSS rule. A lot similar now. Working. Not able to see the changes made in code, refresh the page. Once you are changing something, refresh the page. You have to refresh every time. Now everyone has it at the same place. Uh, everyone can see after Z index, Z index, two goes on this card, Z index one goes on this card. So this becomes one, this becomes two, that's why this card comes up. Yes, cool. I can see, great, great, cool. Show tickets class, it's like this, Z index one, Z dash index. The second white one is not working. May try checking the spellings. 
if you make some spelling mistake like this, it will not work, right? It doesn't, it doesn't understand any word. It only understands the specific words. Then it will only work like this. No box shadow in my code. It should be there on the categories here. Absolute and relative position. It's okay if you did not understood it. Just, just write with me. That's fine. Okay, cool. Now what we are gonna do after this is what what is remaining now? See this on the on this card. What do I want to change? Think about it. Yes, correct, correct, good. What do I what do I need to change? Exactly. Border radius. So add that border dash radius. However much you want. Let's try play around with it. See what see what works for you. You don't have to write the same things as of, as of me. So I'll, I'll try with 10 because it's like standard for everyone. And if I write 10, see it works exactly same almost, right? Not even, you don't even have to change it. Right? Now it has the box shadow. Uh, oh yeah, bo no, border. Box shadow is, if you want to give box shadow on tickets, just copy it as it is line 55 copy paste it here i don't think that is needed because you won't be able to see it because the background is dark here okay no needed yes not needed you have box shadow in my code but not showing the screen like yours maybe then you are, are either not refreshing the page or you have made some spelling mistake while typing it so insert type, uh, copy it like this. Check the spelling box dash shadow, the values. If you are not missing any space, then in, it, then also it will not work. You have to know about each and everything. Right? Semicolon, uh, the semicolon, the commas, the colons, everything it needs to know about. Okay. So, and any other problem you have, don't worry. Just just play around with it, like try to make it work. Otherwise, you know, like I'll be too, I'll be, I'll, I'll uh, you know, I'll help you out all of you. Don't worry. So try, try. This is like V session. Here we try to make things work only. You will get enough time to fix all the issues. Don't worry at all. Add icon. I'm not getting on the screen. <clears throat> Add icon. It, it should, everyone, it should work. I, I mean, Okay. Cool. Now let's move on. What do we want after that? We want to show the uh, this thing, the ticket types, one way, round trip, multi city. Code is not opening in VS Code. That will not, like, it's simple process. You just right click and open it with VS Code. That will 100% open in VS Code. There is nothing to go wrong there. VS code is just like notepad, but like dedicated for writing code. So if you can open it in notepad, then it, you can open it in VS code as well. Okay. Otherwise just open VS code and here go to open in the file. Yes, correct. You can use the radio buttons here, but so let's create this. So in the tickets section, tickets here. In this card, right? We want to do this in this card. Card, sorry. So I'll be writing my code here inside the ticket section. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a game and give it a class of anything that you want. Call it, let's say, these are ticket types. So one way round trip, multi city. So I'm gonna call it ticket type. And inside this, we want to create three different more elements. You can use span here or div. I think span will work here because we want to target uh, smaller elements here. So span, you get that span here. So what we did inside tickets, we created ticket type. And inside that we need three different span elements that says one way round trip multi city. So one way and round trip and span. Multi city, all capital here. So I'm writing all capital here. Yes, yes, I'll do that.
second white box uh, it's called as tickets tag uh, class sorry okay now let's give the uh, the styles to tickets class tickets type class so if you go here or ticket type okay so dot ticket type and yes good uh, okay so let's try that what do we want here let's see how it works first so if i say this and if i go here how does it look it looks here one way round trip and all it's not good uh yes radio buttons we'll add that we'll add that let's first align them properly we want it here so what do we want what would we write to add some space from the top we need to add some space on this element from top Correct. Good. Correct. Margin top. So we want to add that. So let's add that. If I go back, uh, where is it? Here. Add margin. Play around with it see how much margin you need so if i add margin dash top let's say uh, i don't know 50 pixels px okay spelling is wrong so it's saying that unknown property margin top so margin is the correct spelling m a r g i n an ordered list no you don't need an ordered list it's a uh, you know it's just radio button empty radio buttons so if I do this, now it's having margin on the top side, right? Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some space on the in, inner side as well. So to add that space, instead of adding spaces on each and every one of them, what we can do is we can add spacing internally on the tickets class. So if I add padding there, yeah, you can use margin left on every single element that will work. But if you add the padding on the parent element internally, so it will add internal spacing, right? Instead of spacing on the out, outside so if i go to the tickets tickets if i add padding here give any padding in the tickets class let's say 10 pixel again see if it works right it has added some spaces on the uh, internally on right so this is how it looks now so if i uh, make it 20 i guess Right. My card has become bigger, but that's fine. You don't have to make a pixel perfect. Like I said, something close is also fine. Yes, yes, you are supposed to do this along with me. The U session starts at three. That's a different case. OK, so what I did, I added padding here and I added margin top on the ticket type. That's it. Margin top is somewhere around 50 pixel. Padding is somewhere around 20, 15. You can play around with it. 15, I think, work, will work fine. Yeah, something around that i think 20 work well 20 pixel it is responsive no it's not the original side is not responsive all my texts are in gray color yeah that's because we gave the gray color to in the body check your body class at the very top yes yes you have to do this with me Margin top, padding, two things I have added. Okay, so now next thing what we want is we want to uh, give, let's think about it. So we want to make this change that it has an icon and it has a background something like that looks like this. Okay, so what we are going to do is we are going to and also the all the text is bold it's not a small text and their colors are also different and all right so we have to change many things here uh firstly is this done can you see the same output as of me it, is, it, is it looking like this
Yes? Good. Now let's make this one way and give it a background like this. Then give, add an icon here, then make the text black and all these things, right? Background, you know the CSS rules for that now. The CSS rule for background is background color. Give it a gray and white color that is very fine. Give it a border radius, add some padding and all. See whichever works for you. So I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new class for this because only one can have this, uh, one element can have this thing, right? So if I go here one way and if I create, a, uh, yeah, we, we can have this class here directly. So like selected ticket type like this. Those who are getting shadow first work second, they are at Z index two. Okay. I don't know what uh, thing was that, but uh, if that works, cool. Why don't we use IDs for individual events? We are not learning IDs because only one thing we want to learn today, which is class, because we, are, we, we can't cover each and everything in one day, right? One thing that is working is also fine. Okay, cool. Now let's, uh, let's give the stylings to it. So what we want to do on this one is if I select this dot selected type, we want to give it background color and the border radius. So background color, how does it look background color? If I type just gray and the box will appear. And if I, I'm going to just take it somewhere here, like white and not exactly black, like very faint value that is somewhere around here. Okay. You, yours could be different. That is acceptable. Remember that. A refresh it looks like this then we need to add padding so what i'm going to do is padding should be on every single one of them right remember that so if i do this dot selected uh, okay do this background color on selected ticket type add a background color then you can also like add the border radius so that like we don't have to touch it again border dash radius uh, try 30 pixel value, it looks like this, right? A bit close, but not exactly. We'll fix that. Okay, let me know when you can see the same output. I'll keep the source code open for you. This class, these are the rules. Why not make changes, including all three span elements? Because all three of them don't have this uh, background and border, only one of them have. Right? So you know, you just need it only one, this class only on the one span. But yeah, all, all spans, you're going to do that, which is right after this, because all three of them have one thing in common that they have padding. Uh, if I select this, it's going to have some padding from the uh, selected one or I can add the margin here as well that will also work they have the the font is bolder a lot bold than the other fonts so that we're going to make the padding uh, we're going to add the bold icon, uh, icon and we're going to add the these circles and this icon as well okay to add the icon you have to go to the icons link that I sent and here search for checkbox or just check I guess Right? Which icon do you think from this I should use that matches this or any other icon that you found? Correct. This looks a lot same, uh, same as the original one, right? Check circle. Yes. So if I open it, and if I copy this thing and paste it where I want. I want it before one way word, paste it here like this. How will that look like this? So of course I need to change the font size of that icon. So fix that. So I'm going to go here. Uh, okay. I'm going to create the, I'll create the dot 
take it type and select the span element inside that ticket type like this so ticket types all span elements logo coding which logo this is i i check circle i copied it from font awesome i have sent the link uh find check here check circle is the icon that you want basically you can even copy the any previous i tag and replace the icon name here check dash circle f a s f a remains common check dash circle you can also do that okay that will also work f a s f a check dash circle like this and i just put, put it inside this so what i want is i want the font size to be smaller for the first so font size i'm gonna add 14 pixel here on the span elements how does that look uh that does not change the font size so can i change the font size on this so font size i can i know i can directly use radio button we can use radio button but radio button will not give you the icon where you want radio button you want radio button on these things these icons so there we'll be using radio buttons no so let me take ticket type span and i inside ticket type inside span search for i element or maybe this default size is yeah, yeah now it's working the icon font size needs to be 14 like this okay then it will override then the next thing is they needs to be bold the way that you can make that is you you need uh can i change here so font the rule for that is font weight and you need to write for 800 value for it what it will do is it is going to make the text bold but because instead of writing b tag if you write it like this you can control the boldness 700 will be less bolder uh you know six will be even less bolder 900 will be more bold so what we want is 800 font weight on ticket type itself let's see if that works yes it makes the text bolder okay and last thing that we want is we want to add the padding inside uh or mar you know margin on the span itself so if i on uh in the ticket type span it should be like ticket type span only or if i add padding here will that work let me check Ten. we don't want 10 no, it, it of course it's gonna add the this is not correct so where should we add it let's try this on the only span element not on the i okay like this so if i do this uh on the span if i add padding internally that is like five pixels yeah this works right What I did, I added the padding on the span and font size on the span I, these two rules. Yes, you can go ahead and implement the input, uh, if the radio button if you know already, that is fine. Okay, you, can, you should be able to see the same thing now after these two rules. right any any anyone facing any issues till now no wait and remember any other way that you know anyhow you can make it work that is always acceptable i'm repeating it for many times that is fine any if you find a way to make this work a, by some other css rules by adding ma margin padding any other way it is always acceptable we are learning at the moment so there is no such thing as the correct way of doing things at the moment there won't be a correct way as long as it works that's the only correct tool font coloring part so changing the color is done by color property so we have done it on the body the like color is equal to something we give like gray or something it is gonna change the font color this is how it will you can do that and font family changes the font which you want to use like times new roman and all those 
right? So this is how we can change the font. The font name is Lato. Okay, cool. Then working good. Uh, then now we have the icon. Now we what we want is empty these empty boxes. These these are like uh, you know uh, these are like radio buttons. They are known as radio buttons in HTML. The, there is a directly element available for that. You don't have to have any icon here. Before the text round trip and multi city, if you just write like this, so input type equal to radio. End it immediately. You don't have to write another end tag, like just this word, like this. Okay, input type equal to radio slash and end it immediately. You should be able to see the circles here, just the way that they are here. Right? Type this, see if, see if it is working. Input type equal to radio before the text. Okay, working. Any doubts till now? Cool. Voice is breaking. Uh, maybe some internet issue. Okay, now you should see the same thing. Don't click on them. It will select them like this. So we just need to make it visually. One way line, what is one way line? Okay, so let's move on then. Uh, the next thing after this we want to do is we want to create the, uh, the, the search box below. Okay, uh, this search box, this entire thing. So creating that may sound hard at the moment. It's not at all. Because if you see this, it's only another div which has only thin border, nothing else. Round trip animation. Where is that animation? What animation? There is no animation. Okay, so let's create this ticket uh, border box first, so that we can see it. So we're gonna, I'll, I'm gonna call it. Uh, go back to the tickets inside ticket. Remember, this comes inside ticket, so it will be like sibling after the ticket type, right? So after ticket type, you wanna create another div and give it a class. I'll call it like, let's say flight search or something, flight search, because we search the flights there, right? And on the flight search, we just need the border, nothing else, so that we can see it. So on the class flight search, if I go up and add the rules, the border first, which is one pixel solid, this is the syntax. Ticket type span i. Uh, ticket type span i. Oh, where is that? I don't know. Oh, this thing. Font size 14. Nothing else. Font size is 14 pixel. It's right here. Okay, so flight search, border radius. I'll write white first so that I get this white box. And then I'm going to drag it somewhere that is faint dark that is something some like this so that I have faint border and then I'll get the border. So if I save this, it will not work like it because the height, it does not have any height at the moment. So let me add some text inside it. Uh, 
So before that, uh, let's create the ticket part itself. So this part, okay. Try adding the border. It will it will not work. See if if you can see the same thing. working cool all right so inside the flight search okay this box this border let's create this ticket first uh, we have already used ticket uh, we should call it flight or something so if i create a inside tickets of uh, sorry flight search if i create a div and call it a, give it a class of flight itself because that's like one flight right and what does contained it has? This is one flight. So I've created one flight option here. And what does it has? It has like three different elements inside it. So we're gonna create that thing. So create one thing here, span, call it from. The another thing is here, uh, we're gonna learn new element type, which is called as H1. Okay, so H1 stands for heading one, which makes the biggest uh, heading type available. So it's going to make the text like this big. Okay, so H1, it says Delhi. And then after that, another span, which says DEL, comma, Delhi Airport, India. So DEL, comma, Delhi Airport, India. This is this creates my one ticket. Okay, so if I copy it twice, See this, this is one ticket. It's gonna create another ticket for me. So which will be like two. Bangalore. What is the spelling? Bangalore. Okay. Bangalore, like this. And then B L R. Empagoda International Airport. It starts at airport, so I'll just say like airport something something like that. Okay. So if I write like this, see how it how it looks. Now it looks like this. First thing, uh, everyone can see this now. Okay, I'll give you some time to write this. I do this inside flight search. Yes, yes, I'll wait. So inside flight search. We created one div and the second div is an exact copy of that div except, except the data changes. So this div and what does it say? It has three elements, span, h1, span, and the respective data. So write this, copy it twice, give it a class of flight, then we'll give it a style and make it work. Flex direction row. If you just write display flex, then they will automatically make the, 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 this, uh, you just write display flex, it will make them horizontal. Okay, cool. Uh, now let's move on. Uh, then, okay, uh, see this. Now we, what we want is these elements are aligned vertically. What we want them, we want them horizontally. So on the parent element, we, what we write in the flight search, the elements should be horizontal. So if you just write display flex there, go to flight search, right? Display is equal to flex. What it's going to do is it's going to take them horizontally, just like what we wanted. Now we can add padding, margin, and all those things on this one, right? This is this was the main task, right? Oh, it, it did not have padding and everything else. But now we have added that. And after this, oh, sorry, it, it did not have the, uh, the, the display like horizontal. Now we have added that. Now we can add padding, margin, and anything that we want. First thing that we want is on every ticket, it needs to have some space outside. So on either add the padding on the flight search or add margin on flights, both will result the same thing. Pick anything that you want, either add padding here or add margin here. I'm going to do flight dot flight and I'm going to add margin there. So margin on every side, try 15 pixel. It, you may need a bigger value here. 
right? If you add this, it looks like this now. Yes, yes, Moet, I'll do that. Okay, cool. So this makes it looks like this. The thing that is missing from this entire thing is its color is black. Unlike the other color is faint, it needs to be a bit darker. So just add on the flight or flight search anywhere. If you add color property, it's gonna change the color to black. If you write black, you should never give black, but if you just do this, it's gonna make the text black like this, right? And now you can make it a bit more lighter. Never give always the entire black color. It needs to be somewhat white, something like that. Okay, mine is here, the black comes here. If I refresh, it still looks same, but it, it, it's like, it gives like better impression if you're not using direct black colors. The next thing that we are missing is the space between this border and this, what this div, right? What is this border? This border is uh, flight search. So of course it needs to add space at the top. So I'm gonna add margin top here. Uh, try 10 pixel, it should work like this, yes. Right, and then it needs to have the border radius as well. And I think my border color should also be a bit more faint, right? So border radius, uh, I'll try five pixel. Uh, it needs to be a bit more big, 10 pixel. Yeah, 10 sounds correct. And then radius color needs to be even more faint. Okay, this looks like this now, a lot same, similar. But see what things I did, I added, margin top on the flight search itself. Why? Because it act, it needed some space from the above ticket selection section. From here, it needed some space here. So I added margin top on this border and then added some border radius. Okay, two things. Implement this, see if it is working. Working, cool. Okay, cool. Uh, the next thing is, there is some extra space above Delhi and below Delhi and both Bangalore here as well, right? Where is it coming from? Automatically. Because you have used H1 tag, it's coming like from automatically. Either what you can do is you can, instead of H1, use a div tag and then create a class for it and then give it a font size, font weight, font color, everything, or just remove the margin from H1. Right, top bottom margin. You, if you remove that, it will deleting margin is easy. You just set it to margin zero. That will remove the margin. If you do that, then it's gonna remove the space from here, above and below. So where is H1? It's inside flight class. So if I target this element like this, dot flight H1, like this, and if I just write margin is equal to zero. Okay, save this, refresh. You see the spaces are now gone. You can have some spacing. You don't have to have like uh, like zero spacing. You can have like, like 10, not 10, like five pixel, two pixel, three pixel, something. Try around, see which one you feel like it's good. I think, but it will add on the all sides. So margin zero is, uh, it's looking much better, right? <clears throat> What did I do? I targeted flight S1 tag. Then, correct, yes. Ah, cool. Then what we need to get do is, you see the, is it working? Anyone facing any issues? We only added margin zero on dot flight H1, like this. Let me know if any issues. Working, cool, nice. Great, then what we are gonna do is on, uh, let's think about it. Yeah, on the flight section, what we want, we want more in uh, 
in the flight margin is there color is there we want the flight to take some width till here right because the original it takes lots of width so we need to hard code this width on every flight uh, tag we have two flight tags so we're gonna go to flight tag and i'm gonna give it a width let's try 300 pixel on flight tag width 300 pixels if i do this it pushes the next content on the right hand side right this is how you can make the width uh you know increase add the spacing here if you do uh, if, you, if you can use also margin as well margin right that will also work uh whichever you feel like working right giving width helps because uh you know now it's applied to like uh you know throughout the entire card like that so it's like part of reusability as well but margin will also work there is no problem with using margin okay uh width is equal to 300 yes you can play around with the value and then what we need is there is there needs to be some right hand side line vertical line okay the right hand side line vertical line it can also be achieved in many ways but if you think about it the right hand side line is only the border on only right hand side so if you write the rule for that let's say border right not on all sides but only on the right hand side correct border right we just uh, give a border on the right hand side let's say one pixel solid and i'll write white here but i'll make it a bit on the darker side by hovering on it if i write like this it, it looks like this okay So you should see the same thing now. Now it's not exactly same. Of, of course, I need to be. It needs to be a bit more white, so it's not like that visible, right? It's not exactly same. Uh, the reason for that is, see this. It has some. Or the flight has some uh, padding here on its margin. So we are adding some margin here. So if we remove that margin then the the borders get attached after this you need to just add padding on the text here itself if you want them to be joined okay so if you keep the border that's fine it's not exactly looking bad or anything okay so it's looking really really close to original website of course the icons and all remember you need to change that in u session at 3 pm not not right now the next part is we need to add the three sections here but you know already what you need to do because this basic part for that is already set up for you the border right it's already there and the width and all you can create these classes you need to create them inside the uh the flight search section we have two flights similarly after that here you will be writing the next departure return and travels and levels and class classes and divisions so these three sections i'm leaving up to you to do in your uh the v session okay we'll move on to make the next part so i'll give you a hint of course if you think about it the card this these cards and these cards they are exactly same the only thing that is changing is they have smaller width they have different text at the top the two becomes departure as well as this icon how to get that icon if you go to this icon and if you just search for down or something here you go chevron down you want this and you want it in blue if you want it in blue just give color on that icon color is equal to this color try try finding this color it's like sky blue or something and then it will be like the tour is replaced with departure and the icon the bangalore is re replaced with 9th jan the apostrophe and 2022 and sunday uh, the address is replaced with sunday and you see the all cards are basically exactly the same cards all you need to do is you need to play around the text color the size fonts margins nothing else basically it's copy paste display id not display id not flex not sure what you mean flex is not working then like uh, flex 
is applied where you want to make the children as horizontally aligned like this. So give the parent as display flex, then it will work. Okay, we are also missing this text. We can also add that, but it's basically, if you see the tickets, ticket type here, you just need to add one more div. Round between from and to. Oh, this thing, it's another icon. So if you search for the icon, that's a good question. Uh, return, I'll send search for return. Okay, this exchange. So if you take this icon, and if you put it between these two lines, a uh, flight between these two flights, you have to give it a class and then position it center by giving display flex and just, uh, sorry, align item center. Yes, Rohit. Yeah. Program is not correct. That is, a, that is fine. That is acceptable. Uh, at 3 p.m., our IS will help you out to make it, you know, look, uh, you know, at least make it work. Is there any need to add margin? If you feel like, remember, there is no correct way to, you know, uh, there is no like one correct guideline. You can have any way that is working, that is also fine. That, that works. So, uh, so the next thing, uh, what we want to implement is, uh, this part, remember, you'll be doing that. I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna do everything, of course. So it's looking much similar. Few changes needs to be there, like this card needs to be a bit below and anything else, anything you feel like the shadow should be adjusted, play around with the values, try reducing, increasing values. But uh, at the end of the day, the, it will not be exactly the same as original page. Okay, remember that. So it's fine. You just have to make it look somewhat similar. So the next, the next task is we want to add the select fair type. Okay, where is it? It's below this box, right? What is this box? It's a uh, flight search box. So here I'm gonna add another div, give it a class of fair search. Okay, so this is where I'll be writing these icons. If you see what's common between these icons and these icons, everything, nothing changes, right? So basically what you need is, except like, you know, the font size and color and all, other than that, the icon is same, icon is blue. You know how to make an icon blue, like give it a color. So icon is blue and other things are exactly same input. There will be a span, there will be an input box and a radio type, and there will be some text. Okay. So to implement this and this as well, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to create that thing. So fair search is there. It says select a fair type. So here, uh, okay, it needs to have some width. So let's do that. It needs to be in a span. I'll tell you why. Select a fair type. Okay, how does that how does that look like this? It needs to of course be a bit below here somewhere, right? So give it a margin from top for the first. So fair search. Write some classes for it. I'll collapse the tickets now because okay, tickets needs to be there. Ticket type don't need to be there. And flight search also going to be there. So fair search is what we are working on. So I'll go on the top, right dot fair search here. What we want? We want margin from the top. So margin as top needs to be somewhere around 50 pixel, 60 pixels. Let's try that. Not this, this page. Uh, I think it's a bit too much. So let's let me try 50 pixel. Correct, right? So now it's a bit correct. Somewhere here I want it, and it's there only, right? You can you can play around with the values. Then can you see the same thing? What I did, I created a class fair search and I added a span inside it. And then on the fair search, I just gave a margin. Can you see the same thing? 
Okay. I'll give you some time. Yeah, yeah. Type it, type it. See if you can get uh, see the same thing. Can we change its width? Yes, that's what we want, right? Because it's going here, and this one is like it's like uh, only it, this one has only this type of width. So we need to change its width. So of course you want to give the span a class and change its width. Correct. Messed up padding. It's not working. Uh, anyone who is whose code is not working, who is lagging, it's okay. Try as much as possible. Like I said, at three, the IS will be able to help you out. Don't worry. Okay, cool. The next thing is uh, we need to give a width to this thing. So I'm going to add a class here. Call it uh, fair select and just to just so that I can give a width on this one only. I don't want to give width on others. Uh, so that I'll be giving I, I'm giving it a special class. So if I go here and dot fair select width is equal to I think 40 pixels should be fine. Let's see. Oh, the width won't work like that because of course it's a text and the width uh, the things are overflowing. Let me think. So if I add, I'm gonna experiment around here. Okay, so flex this. Now it's working. Now I can display flex. We need to have that. So how much we need? We need 80 pixels somewhere around that. Right for this to work. And you need to reduce the font size as well. So on the fair, fair search, on the fair select, I'm going to add display flex and the, reduce the font size of entire thing, the fair search. So here I will say font size is equal to try, I guess, 14 pixels. See how that, how does that look? Oh, the width needs to be 80. Now it looks like this, right? Much closer. This is my code, fair select. And it's on the select type of fair. The class is on select type of, uh, select a fair type uh, text. And the rules for that are fair select, width 80 and display flex. Working, cool. Now move on uh, for if you are if you are this part is working all you need is after this you just need basically this structure exactly here except the icon color will be blue nothing else you can basically copy paste that thing change its uh, the CSS rules and it will work. When did you use class search container search container? You mean this fair search? It's here. It's after the flight search. We implemented the flight search here, right? This this box. So after comes the fair select. Fair search and fair select. So okay, cool. Done. Okay, all right. Now, like I said, copy paste this thing here. So where is that thing? I think it's in the ticket type. This ticket type. This entire div. Right? And the tickets classes. Ticket type will be there. Copy it. The entire thing. And paste it just right after the here. And change all its uh, classes because we are not only uh, like custom classes only, not the icon class, of course. So ticket type becomes, I'll call it fair uh, type and selected fair type. So that the original classes are not applied here. If I do this, if you see this, what will happen if I had ticket types? The original classes of tickets will be applied here, and which will make the text bigger, which we don't want that. It's here somewhere. Okay. Okay, this flex. And then you need a line item center.
and it also have margin top you need to remove that so this is the reason why you don't, don't want the ticket type on it directly so what you want is fair type and selected fair type okay if you write like this it will look like this so fair only these things okay i did copy the thing and replace the ticket type with fair type then you should see the this thing like this now this is the place where we want display flex on the parent of these both see if you can make it work otherwise i'll tell you uh, but before that let me add all the ticket types so regular fares armed forces fares so i'm going to go here regular fares armed forces fares yes i'll i'll i'm, I'm going to do that yes student fares then senior citizen fares so copy paste senior citizen fares and then have yes yes that's fine that's fine no worries if you have skipped some things if something is not working uh, at 3 pm is will be able to help you out don't worry right now just implement whatever is possible so that you, then only you'll know what things are working and what thing you should have changed okay because at 12 we everyone started with the same uh, everyone started on the same step right so uh, and the last one is the double seat fares so i'll write like this double Fares. Save it. It looks like this now. Okay. First thing first, we need to make the display uh, this thing come in the same line. It's not an, at the same line at the moment because the selected fair, the fair select class. It's taking. Uh, you see here the fair search and the div. What happens with the div is div takes the content on the new line because its display is by default block. Uh, the span, what we want, that's why is both the things to take on the same line. On the parent, we want to add display flex. So if I just temporarily add it like here, display flex, you see automatically it looks like this. So all you need to do is on fair search, the parent of both uh, fair type and fair select quiz display fair search if on this class if i just add display is equal to flex what it's going to do is it's going to make our code looks like this right after this you know like you need to give it width you need to also make, give it a color name a color as like a bit darker Fair search section, yes, fair search has width. Uh, no, fair select has width. Search does not have width. Think about it. If you give the fair search as width, then it's going to give the width to the entire thing, which we don't care about. Yes, Rupesh, yes. Cool. Okay, so. So what I'm going to do is after this, it currently it looks like this. So here onwards, like change the font color of this by changing color property, then font size by font size property. So where is this icon? Find it. Its icon is inside selected fair type I. So if I select this dot selected fair type I, font size is equal to, I'll try 14 pixels, see how that looks like this correct and after that i wanted color is equal to i'll try start with blue and then change to sky blue somewhere around here to somewhat match the original icon right it's like i think it's a bit darker so i'll go a bit here and it looks like this now 
right? So add this selected fair type I. So on the I inside the selected fair type, that means the icon, you want to reduce this size and you want to add a color on it. See if it, 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 it works. Working? Anyone facing any issues? Selected fair type. Uh, so it, it's basically copy of the above section. The check boxes and the in the tickets. Remember, we wrote some one way return multi city. It's a copy of that only, except selected ticket becomes selected fair, but it does not have any classes at the moment. Okay, see this if this works, then I'll let's see if I add width on this, will that work? No, because on the parent, you need display flex again. And then if I add width, now let it be, let, 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 it's okay. Like you don't, like I said, you don't have to match each and everything. Uh, this thing you can achieve by align items and display flex. Then you can add the width on it. And then you need to have like this div as you know, singular div. It's gonna take some time to do this, achieve this. For now, just give it a font color. Like it should be darker. So after this, uh, where do we want to change the color? On the fair types, all the span elements, right? So I'm gonna select that. And in the fair type, create a class fair type, it, it doesn't exist. And inside that span element, I'm gonna add color is equal to uh, gray. Try start from here, make it a bit darker like this. Is it working? Yes. Okay, and then comes the last part, trending searches. You see, this is copy of this. All you have to do is take this thing, copy it here. You know how to get this icon from, right? Now you have to go here in the icons, look for arrow, uh, right? You want this icon, arrow right. So you're gonna take this icon, you're gonna use it here, reduce its font size a lot. It's gonna be like five, six, six uh, seven pixels at max. I don't know, play around with it. And then it's color as well to make, to match this blue color. Okay, and the rest thing is simple. Trending searches is just like plain one single span. This is one single span. This is one single span. So three span elements and in a div and so on, right? Any doubts till now? Anything with me, but still not working, let me know that. It has to be in the fair search or outside div. It has to be in the, uh, it has it has to be outside div. The fair search, it, this is select. Okay, the fair search, you mean this thing. Yeah, it has to be inside fair search. So that what you can do is you can, uh, the simplest way to do that is put select and type in a div right both the things in a div and then create another div if you do that then you'll have this as one div and you'll have this as one div then it will you know you can add the margin on the right hand side easily on the path, first div so it, this goes inside fill, uh, select so fair search only this but these two things instead of two different things it goes in one div like this And then you can have another div for this trending searches. So span trending searches. If you do this, everything remains the same. Okay, the display because of the, the div display breaks. So you have to fix that by the display flex and all. I'll leave it up to you, but yeah, you have now both the things here, right? What you have to do after this is the span, this div needs to have the display flex, that's it. So display flex, it's gonna take it here on the right hand side, like that, right? So I'll revert back so that the code looks same at least to here, but uh, I gave you some hint to how to make that work, okay? Or in the simplest, even if you write it outside, 
just add margin right on this one and then it will work it will come here uh, fair type is not under location search this is side by side okay that is also fine as long as it works okay cool cool now let's tell me what do you think we need to implement this search button what how what take a guess anywhere is fine this div can be anywhere now a button okay button tag i'll tell you we can do this with div tag as well because correct absolute nice center correct and bold for the text correct color exactly the color is a gradient again just like flight div uh flight div oh okay yeah, yeah yeah same thing like flight div except the border is a lot bigger okay box shadow i don't think there's a box shadow here if you need uh if you i don't think you need that let's let's see this now. let's see let's make it work padding correct so after fair search uh, we are inside tickets section okay still inside ticket section what we want is we want to go outside ticket section now i'll tell you why because z index uh if if it is required if you are writing it after the tickets then you may not need the z index okay so after the tickets i'm going to create a div and i'll call it class is equal to search dash button and the button I'm going to create instead of creating with button uh, element, right, you can create a button like this as well, which says search. But instead of doing that, it will work, right? Where is button? Its button is here. And instead of doing that, and that 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 happened because you write it outside of the tickets. If you write it inside tickets, then the button will be here. Okay. So if you write it here, then you have to position it according to the parent element. Then comes the position absolute and all. If you write it inside the tickets section, then you don't. You have to position it according to the parent, like which is this element. Uh, yes, yes, you will get that, but not right now. You'll get it at two. Uh, you, uh, the IS will help you out at three. So that's why I'm saying that even if something is not working, don't worry. Just try to make whatever thing you can make work. That's the objective. Okay, objective of today's goal is not make creating make my trip. You you can't sell it because it's it's not that worth, right? Objective is to learn the web technologies. So try as much try to implement as much as possible. So even if I keep keep it here, remember it's just skeleton. It doesn't matter where where you're keeping. But what I what I said is I I'm not gonna use the button element. I just write search inside it like this. I'll keep it here. Now it's not a button anymore. It's just a plain, simple search string. And we are going to convert this search to make look like this. First thing is I want it at the center here. Okay. But before that, let's calculate its width and height. The width is 216 pixels. Height is 44 pixels. Okay. So if I select this, Go to my styles, dot search button, give it width 216 pixel, and height is 44 pixel. This will not, you can you cannot see it because there is no background. So if I just write background color is equal to blue for now, I'll send the gradient for you later. Let's see somewhere faint color like this. So it now looks like this okay not not even close i think it, the color needs to be a lot more faint than this so that you can read the text okay, somewhere around here is there any problem if i take button on it it has to be text no problem at all the reason why i'm doing this is if you write button then you'll have to override the button's default styles as well if you are anyway creating from scratch then you don't have to worry about what the default styles are there on the button so there is no problem in using that it's just like you'll have to do a bit more work but totally fine if you are using button totally fine 
you have to write background and you know remove the border button remember button has some border the button has some background default stylings are there which i don't want to remove so if i do this then i don't have to do anything from that okay how does it look like this next thing the color is white so i'm going to add the color is equal to white like this next thing the font is big so i'm going to add font size is equal to uh, let me try 34 pixel how does it look a bit bigger i guess 28 sounds correct yes this one this looks much better next thing what we want is uh, this text needs to be at the center so if i just write text correct text align good center what this will do is it will bring my text to center you see how easy the css rules are basically i'm representing what i wanted by css i wanted to change the color i wrote this color rule correct what is the next thing border radius yes so do that so border dash radius border radius is how much you can give it in pixel you can give it in percentage as well uh if i do 50 percent because it's like equal on the both sides will that work it looks like this no so i'll try in pixels let me try like 30 pixels it looks like this right 30 worked i guess then 35 yeah yeah 30 worked you cannot increase up beyond up of some value so after 35 it's uh, 30 i guess it's going to look the same even if i try to change more so 30 35 is correct top padding yes so it, need, it needs to be centered from vertically so to do that uh there is no like this uh, text vertical so like this there is no text vertical alignment so to do that you either you have to you know surround this search in a span or something and then add a margin on it but then like text center won't work the text alignment won't work so what do you think we should do padding won't work uh top padding won't work here because the padding think about it will, will it work top margin margin will not work in fact i was that that think about it i just line height show button tag wait wait i'll give you time to write this okay do one thing write it uh, implement this button i'll give you time write it because we have written enough css rules then we'll make the text center display flex okay justify content center okay let's try that meanwhile just implement this correct yes so that's nice yes justify won't work you need align items good If you are done till now, then you can move ahead. Like try implementing the next part, adding the padding, adding the uh, anything else. Gradient, I'll give you. Let me find it myself. So how do we find the gradient? You select that element, try to find the background image property here somewhere. It's this. Okay, so I'll copy this value, background image, linear. Wait, what, what does it do? Var. Okay, it's the linear gradient here. So if I add, instead of background color, if I add background image, 
if I write like this, does that work? Yes. Right? Exact same color now. Except my font is a bit bigger. I can reduce the font to 24. And I'll let me send you this background image in the chat. Pick it from Zoom chat. This is the instead of background color. If you use this, it's gonna give you the same exact same color. Now my things are looking like this. Now the same thing. Let's see if the padding works. Few 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 of you are thinking like padding top will work. Uh, if that works, that's fine. But the correct way to do that is flex, of course. So ten pixel. If I add this, it's gonna add the padding from like all the sides, and it's gonna make the button look bigger, like this. That is fine. There is no you know problem with that. But display flex, does that work? Align items center. If I write like this, okay, it, it's uh, justified. You, you also need to justify content center. So all three rules you need here. If you do this, then it's like corrects exact at the center from everywhere. These three rules. By writing these three rules, you don't have to worry about even text align center anymore. Okay. Because justify content is doing that now. Now your button is looking exact like their button. Not no change at all. Okay. Working everyone. Now we just the position remaining, and that's it. So try changing its position. How do we change position? But if you write like this directly, like for uh, top is equal to zero, it won't work, right? It's not changing anything. Don't spam. I see your message. I have already answered that message. There is no point in sending one message at 10 times. It only irritates, right? <clears throat> so first thing you need to do, apply top, left, bottom, right, these rules is you need to give it a position is equal to absolute. If you do this, it's going to Take this and it's going to apply the, the element to the top of your parent. Who is the parent of the search box? The parent is the tickets section, right? See this. And because top is equal to zero, that so if I remove that, then it's going to be here. So the bottom work, let's sign. So bottom is equal to zero. If I write like this, top 100%. Which is like bottom zero, right? But what we want is negative. So if I want, or if I write like in negative minus 10, it goes a bit below, right? So 15, even below. We want somewhere around until it comes to center. Bottom center, uh, I don't think that's a value. But if you write like this, you see it's coming here now. And now you can add left on it. So left is equal to 50%. Uh, I think you can give here percent as well. So if you write like this, oh, okay, it's going to take the 50% of the screen. So you need to get uh, somewhere smaller value, 40 here, like this. Right? It's almost same, exactly, not exactly same, but the difference is not exact that big right by doing some efforts making some you know making some changes in the font font size margins here and there you can absolutely match the original styles right now we can stop here uh, the only code that i have changed is added three more lines position absolute after display flex so six more lines display flex align item center justify content center and then position absolute bottom sum and left sum so bottom for like taking it below and left for taking it from the left. Uh, I'm sending this code again on this slide. You all you have to do is download it again. Uh, check what things you missed. Uh, many of you missed a lot of things because the time limit and all, but that is fine. Uh, it was it was just a learning session. Remember that, right? So some mistakes will be there. Some things will be there that you did not understood. Your job after this is. So button tag, tag, or you want to glasses. I, I'm sending the source code, don't worry. I'm sending the source code. Yeah, yeah, we are stopping here now. I'm sending the source code on Discord again, updated source code. 
what you have to do is download it open it again compare it the things things that you did not do correctly study my source code your task at 3 starts from here onwards okay what you have to do is first thing you have to correct all the fonts it's basically say searching for proper font and replacing the current font value nothing can go wrong here nothing absolutely at all okay we have added all the styles whatever you need we just need to make the icons correct the next thing that you have to do is finish the cards okay this information and this information is acceptable you can skip this one but this is important this one is needed the departure return and travelers adding this is optional okay and the last thing is this card which is you see no difference at all if it's just like combining this thing and this thing together okay so icons the three cards the three cards are really simple this is not going to take much time uh hey welcome everyone so this is an extension to the boot camp that we did on last saturday where we made the make my trip uh the website right so we tried to create the exact same page that was there with uh make my trip uh with just html and css so currently this is what we have uh, uh if you have finished your task the similar uh, your page should also look like something similar it may not be exact same this is something that i finished myself your could be a bit different depending on what task you received so it's totally fine if your uh, if your page looks something different if you have some different element uh what we are going to achieve today is will be adding the dynamic functionality right so so far what we have created looks something like this right it has some it may have some icons if you have you may have finished some the the ticket section and this there is a search button so what we are going to do is we are going to add this functionality now the scrolling cards right so adding this yourself is easy but it could be a bit of a work right uh, adding the you know animation the slider and all so what i'm going to do is i'm going to use this library called as swiper uh, what it does is it it makes easy to add the the, the sliding feature in your page uh, easily right it, it makes the things easy for us so that what we can do is we can just start using this a library and make you know just concentrate on implementing the cards itself and this the library will handle all the code that is required to make the card go left and right on the button click right so to do that simply you just need the uh, this this link from the cdm you can just uh, look at the url here swiperjs.com/get started so i'm going to copy this link and i will go to my code and i will paste it anywhere in my head tag anywhere is fine because it's a css link and it should import the swiper css the next thing that you need is this script tag uh, make sure to not paste it inside head because this script tag refers some element in our body and the if body is not loaded first the head is loaded first it will not find those elements so what we want to do is scroll down until you find the body tag look for the end of the body tag slash body and before that paste it anywhere like this so scripts i'll just write a comment so that we know where the scripts are and paste that thing here before body okay so if you do that now you have the swiper in your page of course nothing will work because what you are doing is you are just importing that library what you want to do after this is you want to create the section cards and let swiper know that you need to swipe uh, you know left and right with the cards and all right so to do that uh, all you need is to create this kind of structure which will be doing uh, just in some time okay so where do we let's first decide where do we want to write the code think about all the finished features right so the categories is the section where which holds the uh which holds the you know the the upper category so it's in the main tickets is also the part of the main section which is this main content so what we want to do is we want to write something after this main section right so this is the main content so it should come here somewhere so what i'm going to do is i'm going to write it's inside uh, write my next section inside my uh, uh container but after the main section And we can give it any class that we want. Uh, let's say this is we are trying to create this section. Uh, I, I can I can call it let's say news uh, because they are providing some news to us, right? So maybe call them news or something. 
well, whichever is fine remember it's just your class name so if i call it let's say news right so this is gonna give us the so this is gonna give us the uh feature to you know so that we can target it in the the css and you know change its display and width and height so what we want to change let's think about that later so inside this news we are going to add our swiper specific classes mainly first thing that you need if you see here the first thing that you need is the div class and the div class has the swiper wrapper inside it and pagination this we don't care about and next and uh, next and previous buttons and scroll bar if you want scroll bar we don't want scroll bar we don't want pagination so inside news i can use this as it is this div and then delete the pagination and scroll bar divs so i'm going to copy this and instead of creating anything on our own i'm going to paste the swiper section here okay and remember we don't need pagination which says one two three four i'm going to delete that and we don't need scroll bar as well i'm going to delete that now if you save this your page will look like this if you notice there is a new uh, this functionality has uh, you know added it says slide and it has arrows and all so this arrows are on all those things are coming from swiper uh, it won't work at the moment the reason being you you haven't told this library that on what button click you want to uh, take your slides on the left and right so so we, we need to tell that by using by writing our own script here now what is a script script is a specific format uh yes it's a specific language you write uh, it's neither html it's not css you write it in javascript javascript enables this dynamic behavior in your page right so for that what you want to do is you just want to call uh just just remember this syntax you may not be aware of what is going on unless you know javascript it's not going to be easy uh, the first thing is you need to tell where do you want to initiate your swiper library on and give it a class just like we give dot to a class uh, you know identify a class with this uh, class search we're going to use the same syntax here so our swiper begins here so i'll write dot swiper here and the next thing is the configuration on the swiper what configuration do you want to give the one of the uh, simple configuration that looks like this so direction is horizontal what this will make is swipe the card left and right not top down right so there are many such configuration available you can play around with it loop false will stop the infinite loop so if you reach the end of the card it will not start from the first card again if you want that behavior you can just set it loop to true the next thing that we need is uh what are our navigation elements so for that you need to give it something uh, that looks like this navigation which this is known as an object okay so these are booleans and this is a string so all these things you'll know once you start with javascript so for now don't worry about it just uh just write this exact same syntax and it will work so next element is give the same syntax the way that we have given here so it's a class we want to target this element so you're going to write dot and then that class name uh, this is for previous so you're going to you want next year right and previous element same thing so for previous button it looks like this and let's go to give it dot here okay so if you just do this then your swiper at least should start working so if i save this refresh the page there you go you see now slides are working fine now what we want to do after this is we want to take this thing here uh taking this would have been easier you know if you if we had thought about it uh better since the start but it, it was it's just a one day boot camp so we went ahead with whatever was working at the moment so for now what we have to do is we have to uh use some hacks to take the division below uh, the news card uh, make sure it's not the correct way to do the things but correct way would be a bit different but because of the structure that we have created so far we have to stick to this so for what we are going to do is i will target my news division so that i can position it somewhere else so where do we want it i'm going to target it like this and i'm going to give it a position of absolute so that i can take it up and down and left and right anywhere that i want 
So what I want is I want it from bottom, let's say somewhere around 100 pixels. So if I save this, now my slides are here. Now, if you see the width of the slider is, it has increased by a lot. There is a bottom left slider. So it's taking as much as width available. We don't want that. We need to give it some width. Uh, so width would be same as the main container that you have, which was somewhere around 1200 pixels, if I remember correctly. Mm, we can scroll and see that it's like 1160 pixels for tickets. So somewhere around 1200 would be fine. Or you can play around the values, whichever works for you, right? So if I, if, you, if I do this, let me take my, yeah. So if I do this, now slides are here, right? So you can play around the bottom value, top value, however you want. If you want to take it above, below, it will work fine, right? So now after this, what I want is I want my each and every, uh, think about this structure. This div swiper slides, excuse me, swiper slides represent uh no back. Yeah, it's working. So one swiper slide div represents one slide of your page. What we want is we want one slide to be, you know, one card to be inside one slide. Okay, uh, so think about this structure. What is this structure? This is one card and these are the slider elements, right? So one page has three cards on it and one card looks like this. It has a news icon and it has news text. So what we can do is we can create a news card inside each and every slide, right? Like it, which looks like this. So div, and give the class is equal to news card. Like this. Inside that, we are going to have uh, the divs that we talked about. With one is the news icon on the left, and one is news text on the right. And then we are going to target them each one each at the time. So if I write the divs uh, here, class is equal to news icon, and inside that I'll paste my icon and another div with class is equal to news text on it. Okay, so we have created three divs, the one that all, all of them look like this. Now, and remember all of the slides will be the exact replica of these news cards. So all you have to do is after that, just paste this swiper slide multiple times for the number of slides you want to create, right? So for now we have only three slides. So let's create the news card, news icon and news text CSS. So what is there on the news, the parent element first, the news card itself. Right. So if you look at here, new news card has some width, which is roughly is 400 pixels. The news card has some height, which is like 100 pixels. So I know these things because, like I said, I have studied these things already. Um, the background is white. Of course, we know that. The border radius is somewhere around five to six pixels, so which is marginal, but it is there. If you see, the edges are not exactly sharp. Uh, then it has some box shadow so that you can distinguish the background from the card and then it has uh, some like alignments and all those things so let's implement all these things one by one so i'm gonna go create news uh, the it, the name of the card was news card so news dash card okay Every, each one thing at a time uh, the width would be so i'll show you how to check the width so if you go to inspector element and then if you select this card it says at the top 390 by 100 pixels. So 390 is the width and 100 is the height. So you can use the exact same width and height if you want, uh, or you can play around with it, whatever uh, whatever fits your needs, right? So 390 pixel is the width and height is 100 pixel, right? After that, we know that background would be white. So if I write like this, it creates the background white. And then some border radius, we need to uh, try, it, try out and see how which one working. So if I save this, uh, my card looks like this. It's not visible because the box shadow uh, doesn't exist at the moment. So for the box shadow, I have, um, I have noted some values here, just like we did in the, uh, in the bootcamp live itself. So if this syntax may be new to you, but it, uh, just stick to it, it will work. So if you, if you just save this box shadow, 0, 4 pixel, 8 pixel, zero and rgba of zero 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 point two and this is going to create a shadow that looks like this right which is what we want so 
it has some shadow. You can play around with it. You can add some shadow on the bottom by changing each and every value of these four values. See whichever works for you and use that. Okay. So for now, I'll stick to this so now because now I know I can distinguish the card from, uh, you know, we can distinguish the card from the background, which is what we have achieved. Right. So now after that, what we want is we want to add the uh, icons the first. Right. So you, you, if you remember, we use the uh, just a sec. We use the font awesome for adding the icons. So font awesome gives you these icons that you can use, uh, and it's already in installed in our web page. So we can just search it. Uh, like this, yeah. And you can copy this i class is equal to fas and paste it wherever you want. We want it here. If you paste it, it will look like this at the moment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to also write the text, news text apart from it. So the text will be like this. Uh, I'm going to copy the text from here, uh, which says flight booking impact due to COVID-19 or any, any, any text that you want. Uh, one day Bharat helpline call, whichever you want. So if I paste this, one day, let me just copy it from here. I can select that element from here and I can copy the things from here like this. And paste it here. so if I save this, it looks like this now. Now, of course, we need we know that the icon size needs to be larger, the text and icon needs to be in the same height. The text needs to have some less width. And we're gonna do what we are gonna do is we are gonna implement the same thing. Okay, so let's go one thing at a time. What we are going to implement first is we are going to implement the news icon. So dot news icon. If I write like this, uh, icon. Uh, okay, so we need to target the i element from that because we need to change the font size right of that icon itself, not the span or the what we are writing. So its font size needs to be a lot bigger. So we're going to add the font size here and make it somewhere around 34 pixel or something. I'll try 38, 36, whichever works. 36, yeah, 36 looks a bit of somewhat acceptable range. So I'll use 36, maybe 38 uh, should be fine as well. So if I write 38 here, uh, and then what we need to do is uh, we need to give the same thing, the same size to news. The text, uh, what text has is text only has width. So I'm going to give it width of, let's say somewhere around 200 pixels. So if I save this, currently it looks like this. Now all you need to fix is the alignment of the parent and child and the, if they're, they're uh, you know, the center alignment, the spaces in between them and so on. Okay. So what you need to do is on the news card, you need to align its children who are the news icon and news text as words, uh, vertically aligned, like center aligned, right? So for that, we know already we need to add display flex and align items to center, right? So align item center is gonna do vertical center alignment, not the horizontal alignment. So if I save this, now it looks like this, everything is centered aligned now. And what, you, what we want is we want some spacing in between them. You can do this by margin as well or padding, but easily this is achievable, not, not padding, Adding may not work, but margin, you can easily do that. But uh, we, because we are using display flex already and the parent has some fixed width, because of that, what we can do is we can use the justify content property. And instead of uh, making everything center, what we can do is we can tell the flex box to, to align the children evenly like this. So it has even space in between them. So if I save this, now our card looks like this. They have even space in between them. Right, all the children. We have two, so it's giving equal size in both both of the elements. Right, so space even for that. And the next thing that we want to add is we want to. Uh, this is this should be fine for now, I guess. We we don't need to change anything apart from this because the icons are looking. Uh, icon and text is looking fine. What we what you can do after that is you can change you know uh, change the icons and cards and text for other uh, cards. You know this is blue. The icon is different. The text here is bold and all the things you can do this by changing the CSS property of the respective text element, right? Now, the only thing that is remaining is we want to take this slider 
and use it as many times as you want, as many news items that you have. So this is going to create one slider. So if I paste it two, three, four, five, six, seven times, let's say roughly around seven times, if it's the page, uh, it's, it's looking like this. So one slide on each page, right? That is because that's how the, uh, the page, the slider works. To make it work, right, we want three cars on the same page. So for that, you need to come back here in the swiper configuration and you need to add the slides, a, a specific property called as slides per view. So it, uh, it's going to, uh, it's going to mention how many slides in per view you want to have. You want to have three slides. So if I, if I add these slides per view three, what it's going to do is it's going to show me three cards per view, right? So now it looks like this. Right. And you can also change the spaces in between them if you want like this. So space equal to, uh, give it a value of in, in pixels like this, so 25. There, be, there will be 25 pixels in between each card. So now there is no overlap on the next card and, and this card. Right. So now our cards look like this. Of course, you can change the way that uh, it looks and change the way that border is and this position change the cards as well. The many improvements are there, many improvements possible, but everything you know for that, what, whatever you need for that, you need to change this position, just, ch just change the bottom property. If you want to change the border uh, shadow, just uh, the box shadow, just change any value, try changing any value from the our CSS box shadow here, right? Make it try it one pixel, two pixel, 10 pixel, whichever, see whichever works for you. Change each, if you want to change the icons, go to font awesome, try, to find the icon which fits your use case. This looks like alphabet. Maybe try finding something that looks like alphabets, right? This A, whichever works for you. Remember, we are not gonna get the same icons that they are using anyway. Uh, change the text color, just color property. Okay, whatever you need, it's, it's it's available to you now. Now it's just your efforts that how much efforts do you take on this one and uh, you, how much how you try to finish it. Okay. Cool. Uh, that's all for this session. Thanks for joining. Uh, so we learn uh, how to add the dynamic behavior with JavaScript in any web page. If you want to learn more, uh, stick to it. I'll see you in the next bootcamp. Thanks. Bye-bye.